is the quality and depth of their starting rotation. And we'll see one of the guns tonight in Tim Hudson. Yeah, Tim's won four of those of those 20 in our 19 in a row. He's been a solid performer, just like this whole Oakland A club. And until the streak, really, pitching had garnered all the attention. And when you look at these numbers, 15 and 0 with a 2-3-4 ERA, you understand why. It might not be easy for the A's to make it 20 straight wins here tonight because Kansas City's ace, all-star Paul Bird, a 15-game winner, will be on the mound for the Royals here tonight. But who knows? The A's don't seem to care who they're facing. Roll them out on the field, and they're going to find a way to win. And we welcome you back to Oakland. Not a cloud in the sky as the A's get set to take on the Kansas City Royals in the final game of this two-game series with an off day right in the middle yesterday. Well, we're used to talking about how the A's don't get any attention here. It's all about the Giants here in the Bay Area, Tony. But right now, with 19 consecutive wins, I think everybody in baseball all across the country is thinking and talking about the Oakland Athletics. I, mean, I think you're right. It's easy to get caught up in, in this streak. I mean, especially the last two victories. They come from behind and late inning heroics, and people are generally excited about this team. And, you know, witness of people trying to get in. I mean, packed house, <laughs> crazy hats, and shorts. Some need a little bit of fashion <laughs> sense, but you know what? He's a fan. Yep. He paid his money. He's in the ballpark. More power to him. Here they come, the winners of 19 in a row. The Oakland A's right now with a record of 87 and 51, and for the third straight year, a slow start to the season. But in the second half of the year, the A's appear to be the best team in baseball right now. It all starts with the starters for the Oakland A's. Mark Mulder, Barry Zito, Corey Lytle with that incredible scoreless inning stretch. But if you ask people around this team, they say this guy is the leader. This guy is the heart and soul of this pitching staff. Well, I would pretty much agree. I mean, he's the guy that's been here the longest. And, you know, there were years where he was winning games and showing these young guys how to win. And it's been a tough season for him. He got off to a slow start, but He's turned this thing around, and, and the biggest thing is just throwing strikes, working ahead in the camp. An ultra competitive guy, not a big guy, but so relaxed before the game, doing interviews the day of his start, which starting pitchers never do. And I just saw him walk down from the bullpen after he finished his warm up tosses. He stopped by the seats, found a young fan, and handed the baseball he was warming up with over the tarp to a kid in the first row. I mean, these guys are incredibly good on the field, but they're so loose and relaxed. Maybe it comes with youth. I, I guess so, because starting pitchers never do that. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, and, and you're right, it kind of gives you an indication of just how loose this team is. They, they won 19 in a row, and that guy has done a lot of the damage in this 19-game run. He's having an MVP-type type season, 116 RBIs. You made the all-star team this year for the first time, got a knock in that game. I mean, this is a young, aggressive team that believes in themselves, even when others didn't believe in them. Well, they do have the odd veteran, and it seems winning follows David Justice around. Wherever he goes, he winds up in the playoffs, whether it's a Yankee, uh, Braves, Indians, and now it looks like the Oakland A's as well. Let's not forget there is another team here in the ballpark tonight, the Kansas City Royals. But another tough year for Kansas City, just 55 and 83. Michael Tucker, the right fielder, will be the leadoff man for the Royals. Carlos Beltran and then Mike Sweeney coming up behind him against Tim Hudson here in the top of the first inning. As Hudson misses upstairs, ball one. First pitch at 7.08 Pacific time. Chuck Merriweather calling the balls and strikes tonight. And a swing and a miss. Beautiful change up there. It's one and one. That's what these young A's pitchers do is they're not afraid to throw their off speed pitches behind in a camp. Fell behind 1 and 0, came back with a great change up. And the 1 1 to Tucker swung on and missed as he heats it back up to 91. It's 1 and 2. Look how loose they are. Oh, I mean, to be 25 in a big leaguer, huh? <laughs> and in <know>. first place. <laughs> Mark Mulder on the right of that shot there. Well, he is showing Tucker everything he's got. Oakland came from behind, overcame a 5 0 deficit on Monday to win 7 6. Miguel Tejada driving in the winning run for the second consecutive game. They're 7 1, the A's are against the Royals this year. And a swing and a miss. 
Ramon Hernandez will have to complete the strikeout down at first. Great change up. Bottom fell out of it. Nice block by Hernandez. He gets the out at first. Here's Carlos Beltran, the talented center fielder for the Royals. Having a pretty good season, 21 homers. He's already got 30 stolen bases. Puts the pitch down and in ball one. Up at the top of the order, you look at Beltran and Sweeney and the cleanup hitter Raul Ibanez, who's had a breakout season this year, 95 RBIs. They're, they're pretty good up top. They just don't get much from the bottom part of the order. The bouncing ball after second, and Beltran has gone two down. In comparing small market teams, the A's and Royals both fall into that category. Both spend about the same amount of money. Actually, the Royals spend more, but the A's getting a lot more out of their money right now. And boy, for every person that comes into this ballpark, the A's can compete a little bit better. And the crowds have really started picking up here in the last few weeks as this streak has grown. There's Mike Sweeney. Battling for a batting title in the American League comes in second just to point back to Bernie Williams of the New York Yankees. Two outs nobody on top of the first inning. Well, Sweeney's a guy that's impressive when you watch him work. I was you know, here like I normally am early and we're talking to guys around the cage and, and uh, he was headed straight for the t for the cage and to hit some balls off the tee. You know, for a power hitter, he's really a good hitter. He uses the whole field, very aggressive, but under control. And a ground ball to short, two bouncer for Tejada. Off balance throw in time, and the inning is over. Three up and three down to the Royals. The A's are coming up when we come back. Brad, thank you very much. Here in Oakland, one, two, three went the Royals in the top of the first inning. I don't know if it's an omen. One long streak comes to an end as Team USA is beaten tonight. Does that mean the Oakland A's are in trouble here? Tony Gwynn, 19 in a row. The Royals, as we mentioned, went easily against Tim Hudson in the top of the first inning. The A's are coming up against Paul Bird. So if they're going to get to 20, they're going to have to beat a very good pitcher. They are, and they're, they're going to have to earn it because Bird is Kansas City's best pitcher. He's got 15 wins. He's done a nice job. But the way Oakland's going right now, they don't feel like anybody can shut them down. One of the reasons that the A's have done so well recently, some of the mid-season pickups, it seems every year Oakland goes out and gets a couple of guys to help them. That's the case again this year, as you can see some of the impressive numbers on the season for Bird. Ray Durham, though, doesn't care, and he's one of those mid-season pickups. That ball goes to the wall, and it's rattling around out in right center field. Durham's on his way to third, and he's going to be held there. What a way to get it started. You can feel the electricity in the air here in Oakland. Durham lined this ball in the right field. Michael Tucker tried to cut this ball off and he just skips by him. Then he lost his footing. And Ray Durham seeing that, of course, he's just going to go as far as he can go. What a boost he has been in the leadoff spot since coming over in the trade from Chicago. And you know what? He wanted to go home. He did. <laughs> and I think when he saw Tucker fall down, he was he put his head down and was going to go. Now John Mabry, another guy that was picked up midseason by the A's. And it was the Mabry pickup from Philadelphia in the Jeremy Giambi trade. It really seemed to wake up the Oakland clubhouse. Right about the same time, the A's also sent down three players, including Frank Menachino, who had been a regular last year, called up three others, and all the A's players said, you know what, we got a bit of a jolt. And ever since then, they have been playing incredible baseball. Really, it's hard to figure because three years in a row, they've kind of done the same thing where the second half of the season, they've just exploded and played great baseball. And so they feel like it, you know, the trade really woke them up. Now since late May, which is about when Mabry was acquired, they've been loose and happy as you can see. You can't you can't get a shot of the club uh, or of the, the dugout rather without seeing some guys laughing. And Art Howe, I mean he's not a big laugher, but he's so relaxed. He's so even keeled all the time. And 
Somebody asked him if he was relaxed today. He said, sure, I got Tim Hudson on the mound tonight. Why wouldn't I be relaxed? <laughs> I think most managers in Major League Baseball would be relaxed with him on the hill, but you really have to you really have to give Art a lot of credit. I mean, when they were struggling, he didn't really hit the panic button, but he, he demanded that they put forth a better effort. But yet he still lets them play. He lets them go out there and do the things that they can do. Outstanding numbers as you saw over the last few weeks for Tim Hudson who along with Mark Mulder and Barry Zito and now Corey Lytle give the A's probably the deepest rotation in all of baseball sneak it in on the corners of the Royals and that one's lined into center field a base hit so the A's are off and running as Mabry drives in Durham to make it one to nothing. Fans hoping they're on their way to number 20 as we show you the lineup tonight for the Oakland A's presented by Jiffy Loop. Durham and Mabry have already done their part. Tejada's the guy with the game winning hits each of the last couple of days and let's not forget Eric Chavez who's one of the best young hitters in all of baseball as well. It was kind of hard sometimes because Tejada has the last two days especially the last two games especially gotten a big hit to kind of forget about Eric Chavez but. Yeah, what a year he's having too, both offensively and defensively. But, you know, look at Miguel's numbers. I mean, it's just been pretty amazing. And pitch taken just high from Bird to hot up with a game-winning home run on Sunday, the game-winning single on Monday. Third consecutive year that he's had at least 30 homers and at least 100 RBIs. So. Although he's getting better and better, it's not really like it's a breakout season for Tejada. He's not an overnight sensation. He's been good for a while as he gets hit, which is going to drown out the chant of MVP that we were starting to hear here in the ballpark. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, he's been a good player for the Oakland A's for a long time, and this year, he's getting a lot more of a lot more attention. Let's see his slider just kind of get away from him, from Paul Bird a little bit. Number three, Eric Chavez. So first and second, nobody out. Paul Bird, the all-star, really struggling, giving up a triple, then a single, then hitting a batter. And the A's, for the 16th time in their last 20 games, have scored first. Here is Chavez. Look at his power numbers. Top 10 in the league in homers and RBIs. And a ground ball between third and short in the left field, a base hit. Mabry getting the wave as the ball gets through Ibanez. Now Tejada's going to come in to score. And Chavez is on his way to third. And it's three to nothing Oakland. And that's that whammy we were talking about. They just know some, somehow, some way they're going to get a break. Chavez, a nice piece of hitting there. And he just he just misses it. He hits him in the foot. And two runs score and Chavez ends up on third. He sees that ball gets by Ibanez out there and he hustles all the way over to third base. It's a single and an RBI for Chavez and another run scores and he goes to third on the air on Ibanez and well, the Royals look awful early here. It's already three to nothing, and they're forced to bring the infield in as Jermaine Dye comes up. A win tonight for the A's. It would be 20 in a row. That would be a new American League record. And it would give them sole possession of the third longest winning streak in the history of baseball, dating back to the beginning of the modern era, which is 1900. The longest ever by the New York Giants in 1916 when they won 26 in a row. Amazingly enough, they didn't make it to the postseason. In the corner, one and two to die. I just can't begin to explain to you how difficult it is to win this many games in a row at the big league level. Quality pitchers, quality closers. Fly ball right field, twisting away from Tucker and up by him to the wall. Die on his way to second, and now he's heading for third. And here in the first inning, the route is on already. It is four to nothing, Oakland. Jermaine Die 
But a nice piece of hit. He got a ball out over the plate and just went with it to right field. The bird getting the ball up. He goes right with it to right field. Michael Tucker gives it a great effort, but can't get to it. Watch the main guy hit the corner. Looks over, picks up his third base coach. Goes sliding into third. Good, aggressive baseball by Oakland. First triple of the year for Jermaine Dye. Paul Bird still doesn't have an out in this game. There have already been two triples and a two base error, giving the A's a four to nothing lead. Number the players David aren't the Justin. only ones having fun. Now with the runner at third, the Royals again are going to bring the infield in. As David Justice comes up. Just in case you were thinking it was only the young guys who were a part of this streak. Mm -mm. David Justice is hot hitting about 360 over the course of this winning streak. That's what good baseball will do. It's kind of contagious when one guy gets going other guys get going and then for this Oakland team the guys at the bottom of the lineup are starting to hit the ball a whole lot better. And with their starting pitching that makes them a tough team to beat. Swing and a miss, and finally there's the first out of the inning as Justice strikes out. And it gives us a chance to take a bit of a breather here in the first inning and set the Royals for defensively. We've already seen Ibanez and Tucker involved defensively. Carlos Beltran out in center field. Paul Burt's a guy who needs his defense because he's around the strike zone of the ball, gets put in play a lot against him. Absolutely. He's not overpowering guy, but you know, usually if he gets in trouble, it's early in the, the first couple of innings, but you know, he needs his defenders. He's trying to locate and put Pauls in a position where his defenders can really help him. They're hoping that Bird has a shot to win 20 games, something that the guy with Tim Hudson's ability obviously can do. He's not going to win 20 this year because he had such a slow start to the season. But right about the end of May, when the team turned it around, well, Hudson was one of the reasons because he turned it around at that point as well. You've just got to think that all of the teams and all the contending teams in baseball, the last team they want to see in October, Absolutely. you've got to believe it's open. Absolutely. Miguel is the batter with an 0-2 swing and a drive to deep center field. Beltron going back and he's got it. Good catch there. Tagging at third is Die. He'll come in to score. And the A's, who overcame a 5-0 deficit to win on Monday, have an early 5-0 lead here tonight. That's just that's just Good baseball. Gets a ball out over the plate, goes with it, and sends Carlos Beltran almost all the way to the warning track. That's a nice running play by Beltran. Makes the catch, knows he doesn't have a play at the plate. I get a congratulations for his triple. Five to nothing, Oakland. Two outs, and the batter was Terrence Long, the center fielder. Well, you've just got to imagine the confidence for these A's is just overwhelming. Most of them are too young to to know they're mortal. I mean, yeah. they, you know, <laughs> they're all in their early to mid 20s. It seems most of them are signed for a few years. They've got great natural ability, outstanding chemistry, and we all realize that winning helps your chemistry. But Absolutely. I think chemistry helps you winning a little bit. Too. I, I agree, yeah. and I think uh, you know, Billy Bean and, and Art Howe deserve a lot of credit for putting this team together and getting to play. Get them, getting them to play Oakland A's baseball, which is being selective at the plate, but aggressive, you know, good starting pitching. And even a veteran like uh, Dave Justice has jumped right in the middle of this lineup and done well. Slash down the left field line, a fair ball into the corner. This unbelievable inning continues for the A's as Terrence Long has a double. Guys are making it look very easy against one of the best pitchers in the American League, yep. Paul Bird. Third extra base hit in the inning already for the A's. Nice sinker running away. Terrence Long stays behind it. Nice. Hits it to left field. So a two out double for Long. Already five runs in in the inning. And here's the catcher and number nine hitter, Ramon Hernandez. And away, ball one. Paul Bird is a guy who, more than just about anybody in the American League, 
goes deep into a ball game. He's got six complete games this season that leads the league. And he is averaging seven innings per start, one of the best marks in the league. But he may not be around long here tonight. Left hander Daryl May is up in the pen here in the first inning. It's an unusual sight with Paul Bird pitching, having somebody up in the first inning. The thing about it, he just really, I mean, other than the ball being up to the first couple of hitters, I mean, he's made some pretty good pitches, and Oakland has done a, they've done a nice job offensively, not trying to pull balls, but go with them. Upstairs, yeah, Long going the other way for his double. Die going the other way for his triple. Chavez lining a base hit to left field. Maybe hit a ball that was out over the plate. He went right back up the box with it. Fly ball down the right field line, twisting toward the corner, but out of play. Remember, Paul Burke comes into this game. With 15 wins already. What an ugly line for him so far. The Royals have actually been using off days to skip other starters every now and again to give Bird as many starts as possible, hoping to get him a chance at 20. He's supposed to have five more starts after this one. This ball's driven right center field, headed for the gap. And it's off the base of the wall. In to score is long. Hernandez into second base, and it is six to nothing. And it is just one big party right now here at the Coliseum. Once again, ball out over the plate. Didn't try to pull it. Went right with it. Short hops the wall out in right center. The A's have put a six spot on the board. Another designated hitter. knew there would be days like these as the manager of the Kansas City Royals. The A's only once before this season scored as many as six runs in, an in, in the first inning of the game. It was against Kansas City last week as Ray Durham comes up for the second time in the inning. He got it all started with a triple to right field. Time you heard it this noisy in this ballpark. <laughs> Swing and a miss, one and one in the regular season at least. It's kind of exciting. It, it really is to you know walk into a place and have the fans walking in and excited. I mean, when, these guys they got a standing ovation when they came out, came off the field from batting practice. Yeah. You know, they they bought into it. And the strange thing is they won 19 in a row. And they're only three three games up. I know. You know I mean, you got to give. Credit to the Angels in the way that they play too, and it's like some of the players we're talking about today. Hey, we're only three games up. We got a lot of work to do. So I think that has helped keep them a little bit more focused and a little bit more grounded, and not get too carried away with themselves, knowing that as well as they're playing, they're only three up on Anaheim, and they've got eight games left with the Angels in the month of September. Fly ball left field. Ibanez going back. And he's got it on the track to end the inning. Six runs in the first for the A's. It all started innocently enough August the 13th. Total domination by Corey Lytle tonight. Will there be 20? Well, they're off to a pretty good start with a six to nothing lead going to the second inning. If they win tonight, it'll be the American League record for the longest streak ever, third ever since 1900, the modern era of baseball. As Raul Ibanez comes up to lead off the second inning for the Royals. Ibanez, one of the few bright spots in an otherwise bleak season for the Royals, who are 28 games under 500. Kansas City on its way to its eighth consecutive losing season. Tony Pena taking over for Tony Muser early on this season, but the Royals have their work cut out for them. 
And there's a line drive right at the second baseman of Mark Ellis, one down. I'll show you the Jiffy Lube lineup for the visiting Kansas City Royals who come in with a record of 55 and 83. They lost 7 to 6 here two days ago. We've already seen Tucker, Beltron, well, Sweeney, 16, and now uh, Ibanez uh, go okay. against Tim Hudson. So on down the line, we'll get a look at D. Brown, one of their bright young prospects, they hope, who has been called up for the minors. Here's Joe Randa, the steady third baseman for Kansas City, hitting 281 on the season. You know, the Royals, like the A's, hope that the new labor deal is going to do them some good. I think everybody thinks it'll do them some good, but it's not going to turn a bad team into a good team overnight or anything like that. Routine, two hopper, two Tejada at short, two down. Now six runs given up by Paul Bird in the bottom of the first inning and still some activity as we speak in the bullpen in right field. Tony Pena talking things over with Paul Bird the starter and well, I don't know Tony you think he's done. He's probably given him an option here. Six runs against a guy like Hudson it's going to be tough to come back from. Well, we'll find out soon enough with two outs and nobody on here in the Kansas City second. Veteran catcher Brent Main comes up hitting 240 on the season. And a broken bat flare into left field is going to drop in a base hit. And a two out single for Brent Main. His bat just shattered. Look at that. It just flew and stuck right into the ground. That's one of those, uh, that's one of those maple well, bats. The kind of bonds uses. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes with maple you can hit a ball squarely right exactly where you want to hit it and have it just explode on you. But that one got that's mm. off the end. That's off the cup. And he Maine didn't know where it went but he'll take <laughs> the base hit. And a two out single for Maine here in the second inning. And the batter is D Brown who is the DH tonight for the Royals. It's a pitch up and away. At Triple A this year, Brown hit 277. He also suffered a fractured cheekbone a couple of weeks ago, and you can see he's got some extra protection there on the right side of his helmet. Just about 10 days, still has some swelling, and he's going to wear that for the rest of the season to protect himself. So there was a minor league ballpark, just not as well lit as a major league park, and he said he never saw the ball. Take a look at Brett Main's bat. What's left of it? What a nice bit of pine tar working on it too. Hmm. He's gonna have to go and grease up another one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with D Brown, sometimes, sometimes you get hit. You get hit with a, with a pitch. You know, hitting the game. It's kind of sometimes it's tough to get back in there and, and regroup. But uh, he's got his protection now. And he's feeling a lot more comfortable up there. Really like his setup. Probably a little bit easier to regroup when they tell you they're calling you up from the minor well, that, leagues to the major leagues. That absolutely <laughs> helps. And getting a chance to come here to Oakland and you know, try to be a part of a team that ends this streak. Because you know, for Kansas City, this was an opportunity for them. Show people what uh, what they got going on there. Art Howe was talking about that before the game. He said, you know, let's not forget the Kansas City Royals have pride and. Just like teams at the bottom love to knock contending teams out of the playoff picture, he knows the Royals would love just as much to end this winning streak. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Even though they're down 6 nothing, you know, they're not going to quit. Stings the ball out to short. Tejada flip it on to Ellis, and the inning is over. We're headed to the bottom of the second. The A's are coming up again, already leading 6 to nothing. Wednesday Night Baseball on ESPN 2 presented by Jiffy Lube. Well, we're here you're here to watch the Oakland A's and what a start they have had tonight getting six runs in the bottom of the first and knocking Paul Bird right out of this game. Needless to say the all star shortest outing of the season. Left hander Daryl May who has split his time this year between the bullpen and the rotation comes on for the Royals here in the second. To face John Mabry, the first baseman who singled it a run back at the first inning. May spent the last four years in Japan, but back at the big leagues this year with Kansas City with mixed results, as you can see. 
upstairs two and one. John Mabry you know he gets traded here and plays better here than he did in Philadelphia Ray Durham gets traded here and plays better here than he did in Chicago. What's going on. Sometimes it's, <laughs> sometimes it's the young guys you know the enthusiasm for the game again you know, obviously. And deep drive right center field Tucker back forget about it. Number 10 for Mabry in an A's uniform and it is seven to nothing. Hitter. Good position, good extension. See that one arm follow through, and you don't really expect him anybody to hit a ball that far, but good position, good swing. 7 nothing Oakland. Miguel Tejada is the batter. Ooh, that was just foul. When Tejada was up back in the first inning before he was hit by a pitch, the chant of MVP was. Echoing around the ballpark. Mabry doesn't get a chance to play against lefties very often, but with the righty bird out of the game and the lefty May in, Mabry stayed. And you can probably hear it now. You know what these fans feel about Miguel Tejada. And there's no question he's had an MVP type season. He's hit the homer. He's driven in the big run. He's yeah. made, made the plays defensively. I mean, you know, it, it basically comes down to. 24 riders and what they feel, what they feel the criteria is. Because no matter how you slice it, he fits it. He's on a team that's in first place. He's had a great year. There's going to be some Soriano votes, Rodriguez votes, uh, Giambi votes. And luckily, I think for him, it's a nice thing this streak is happening because everybody's going to focus in on this team and get a chance to see what he's really done the last three years because he's been this good. Rips it down the left field line, but he pulls it foul again. Well, but the game winning home run on Sunday and the game winning single on Monday kind of reminded me a little bit of Chipper Jones a few years right. ago when he demolished the Mets in September. And that was when everybody said, wow, this guy's the MVP. And I wonder if the same thing's going to happen for Tahoe. Well, I think he's going to get his share of votes. There's no question. And, you know, his last two games, he got the big hit. Mm, out in front there, and Tahada is gone for the first out of the inning as we send you back to Brian Kenny. Okay, let's go over to the National League. Yeah, this one a little closer. Division leading Cardinals tied up with the Reds. Scott Rowland pinch hitting. First pitch he saw. He rips it out. 7 5. They're in the bottom of the seventh. Cards four up on the Astros. Astros underway with the Fox. We're still waiting for all those St. Louis Houston games that are coming in the next couple of weeks, just like we're waiting for the Oakland Anaheim games, the LA San Francisco games. One of the nice things about playing so many games within your own division. Is that for the most part you finish up the season against teams within your own division and the schedule will get tougher for the Oakland A's eight still to come with Anaheim six still to come with Seattle six to come with Texas who are pretty good for a last place team yeah. and three to come against Minnesota. I mean one thing about the the the, the schedule is, is like you said you're going to bang heads with teams in your division so. If you're going to win the American League West or the National League West, you're going to have to go through the other teams in the division. And whether you're playing teams at the top or teams at the bottom, it's, it's still going to be tough. Chavez chases down and away. Back to back strikeouts for Daryl May. Well, if Oakland can keep it up and win their division, you kind of get the feeling the A's and the Yankees are destined to play one another, but maybe not in the first round of the playoffs. Not to knock the Twins or anybody else, but I mean, the way these guys are playing right now, are they the favorites in the American League? Ooh, I don't. <laughs> that's a tough one. You gonna push the Yankees yeah, off the I, pedestal? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I, <laughs> I still think the Yankees are uh, one of the best teams in baseball, but there's no question. Having gone through what they've gone through the, the last two years in the playoffs, getting beat the way they have, especially last year, leading two games to none. You know, this team is on a mission, and I think it's since the All Star break, they've been the best team in baseball. They've gone out and pitched well. They've hit well. They played good defense. They're together. And they've been able to put together this winning streak. They're going to be a tough team. I don't think anybody's going to want to play them right now. Well, not only the Angels staying close, but I think you're right. The fact that the A's have not advanced beyond the first round of the playoffs. They love the streak. Yeah. And they're on top of the world and they're confident and they're having fun. But I think they realize that 
you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is still to come in October. Absolutely. I think they realize that. So it's going to be interesting to see, even for the rest of this game, because you get up 7 nothing as early as they did, as explosively as they put six runs on the board. You know, you have the tendency to kind of lay back now and say, okay, we've scored seven. You know, we can relax a little bit. Dice skies one down the left field line. Ricky Perez, the shortstop, in the middle there to make the catch and end the inning. The A's, though, add another run to their impressive early lead. John Mabry, his 10th home run of the season, 7 0 Oakland. ESPN 2's Wednesday Night Baseball, presented by Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube, the well oiled machine. And in part by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold down easy. Nafi Perez leads off the third inning for the Kansas City Royals, who are in a whale of trouble right now, already trailing the ace 7 0. Oakland with six in the first, one more in the second. Paul Bird out of the game already. And Tim Hudson, in addition to being one of the best pitchers around, he's a tremendous athlete, and he makes a nice place there for the first out. Now, let's send it to Mike Patrick of the Meadowlands. Here at Giants Stadium, we're getting ready for the start of the NFL season with kickoff weekend, and this city is buzzing about Giants rookie tight end Jeremy Shockey and comparisons to Mark Bovaro. It all starts tomorrow on ESPN with NFL Countdown at 6.30 Eastern, followed by the 49ers and the Giants at 8.30. And we're looking forward to that, just like we're looking forward to watching the Oakland A's the rest of the way and seeing what their destiny is this year. Luis Ordaz, the second baseman, who comes up for the Royals. Ordaz. Hitting just 230 on the season. He was released by the Cubs from their Triple A team back in June. But again, Kansas City without the, the wherewithal to go out and throw a lot of money around here and there. They're you know trying to pull some guys off the scrap heap, get lucky here and there, like the A's have gotten. The A's have not only made some shrewd trades and developed players very well. It's a slow bouncer down to third. Easy play for Chavez. Two down. Well, not to overemphasize the point, but it's looking bleak for the Royals right now over their long history at this ballpark when the A's have had a lead of at least six runs here in this ballpark. They're 338 and two. <laughs> wonder who the two were. I can tell you who the two are. Peter Pascarelli has slid it across the table here. Seattle just last year and the Kansas City Royals, but that was 24 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I bet you. There's Paul Splitorf, one of the great pitchers in Kansas City history. Paul Splitorf was the guy on the mound, we're told, in that game in 1978. Wow. Boy, they're feeding us information faster than we can handle it yeah. tonight. 1 0, oh, the count on Michael Tucker. Struck out in the first inning. I don't think Tim Hudson's going to let this one get away. Though. It's going to be interesting to watch this team, see how they progress tonight, because. You can get into it. You can kind of take it easy. You can coast a little bit. And, and watching the way Hudson's going after Tucker here, he's he's not coasting it. So I think the strength of this staff is the ability to just go out and throw strikes and make quality pitches. Down the left field line, and that's a fair ball into the corner. An extra base hit for Michael Tucker, who has himself a two-out double. Already in this game. Really by both sides we see good hitters hitting good pitches. And this is a sinker down. And Tucker just goes with it the other way and keeps it inside the, the line down the left field line and gets a double. And that'll bring up Carlos Beltran the center fielder who grounded out to second back in the first inning. Been a mainstay with the Royals for the last several years. It looks like Beltron has really, you know, kind of uh, really agreed with what Tony Payne has been preaching because he's since the break he's really started to pick it up. And, you know, these numbers right here are more like the numbers that he had his rookie season. An impressive seven for twelve lifetime against Tim Hudson as he takes the fastball inside ball two. 
And he's still a young guy, too. Yep. And, and just is coming into his own. And, and the Royals need more players like this. They need, you know, they because of the payroll problems, your draft is really important. And so trying to draft good players is really going to help. Well, some of the good players they had, whether they traded for them or drafted them, got away. And you have to look no further than right field. Where Jermaine Dye is right now. He's a former Kansas City Royal, but a guy who was traded here. Of course, Johnny Damon was traded here before leaving and going on to Boston. This game goes in cycles, though. And some of these teams that are down now will turn it around and, and, and start to win, just much like the A's, the Twins. You know, the Expos are hanging in there. You know, some of these teams with a lot of young players, they're going to gain experience and get better because of it. Ooh, look at the movement on that pitch, and it's two and two. That was a great pitch right there. Started that ball in. I mean, look at those numbers. 5-0 and, oh and a 1-8-0. That's his month of August. The scary thing was he wasn't even the best pitcher <laughs> on this team in August. <laughs> I know. Corey Lytle gave up one earned run yeah. the whole month. And we haven't even hardly mentioned his name tonight. <laughs> He's been just outstanding, too. Got him. Strikeout number two for Tim Hudson, and the inning is over. 7 nothing A's going to the bottom of the third. ESPN2's Wednesday Night Baseball, presented by Jiffy Lou, brought to you by Kia Motors, makers of a full line of quality cars backed by a 10-year warranty program. They're well on their way to number 20 here tonight with a 7 to nothing lead on the Royals already. And David Justice, one of the few guys who wasn't an active participant back in the six run first inning, he struck out against Paul Bird. Looks like he's going to make up for that though. A classic Justice swing as he lines one into the right field corner and he's got himself a leadoff double. Now, this is a guy who has been around the block once or twice with a lot of good baseball teams. Here are David Justice's thoughts on the 19 game winning streak. I've been a part of some great winning streaks if you count, you know, grade school, high school, those type of things. But to do what we're doing or what we have done uh, on this level is just amazing. That's what you said. On uh, this level. Yeah, at the big league level, I, I definitely agree. It's you're seeing, usually you're seeing quality pitchers every night. You're playing against quality players every night. Mark Ellis, the batter. Not a foul territory here in this ballpark, but not enough to hold that one. Do you ever recall being part of a 19-game winning streak at any level? No, not in baseball. Basketball, high school basketball, yeah. But in baseball, there's so many intangibles every day. Coming from behind, playing when you're ahead, somebody making a play, somebody getting a big hit. At the big league levels, just I don't think anybody can think about putting a streak together like this. One on the count on Ellis, who's jammed and he fouls it off. Well, it began back on August the 13th here against the Toronto Blue Jays, a 5-4 win. They took the last two of a series from Toronto. Three in a row from the White Sox. Won four at Cleveland, won three at Detroit, won three at Kansas City, took three from the Twins, one from Kansas City, and now try to finish off this and make it number 20. A lot of that is on the road, and that's where, you know, to me, it's, it's just hard to fathom winning that many games, going on the road and sweeping a road trip almost, and coming home and just continuing to play good baseball. Look at the Oakland bench. A guy like John Mabry getting big hits. Dave Justice. Durham's come over as big protector. Ground ball wide of third into left field. A base hit for Ellis. Justice is getting the wave home. The throw from Ibanez bobbled at the plate. The run will score to make it 8 to nothing, And Ellis goes to second on the play. Just excellent execution by the Oakland A's. Oakland being aggressive. Ellis trying to go to the right side. The first two strikes. Gets a pitch he can handle. Base hit to left. Abanez charges. Short hop throw that's up the line. And Maine can't, can't come up with it. Very aggressive. I mean, 
they, they're, they're already up 7 nothing. They don't have to try to send a runner on a base at the left field, but they send him anyway, and the run scores, and Ellis, good base running, gets to second base. Now with that base hit, already every single member of the A starting lineup has reached base, and every A, with the exception of Miguel Tejada, already has a hit in this game, and it's only the third inning. The other thing about this winning streak, Tony, and, and the A's have won a lot of close games. They've got a remarkable record, 26 and 9 in one run games. But you talked about that road trip. They won games 8 to 1, 6 to nothing, 9 to 3, 9 to 1, 12 to 3. I mean, they're pounding teams. They are, and they're, you know, you're right. They're putting runs on the board, and normally we're early in the season, the pitching staff kept them in there, kept them in games. Now the offense is giving the pitchers something to work with. And to come right out and put six runs on the board in the first inning with a guy like Tim Hudson on the mound. You know, that's, it's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be tough for whoever they play down the stretch because you're going to have to be able to match their starters and be able to shut down the offensive guys, too. Look out. You know, 0 2. I think you're just trying to get. Keep him honest, not trying to just let him know, hey, I got to have the inside part of the plate. Well, that's the thing. Is as great as things are going on one side of the field, is as frustrating as the entire season has been for the team on the other side of the field. And this is another long night, it looks like, for the Kansas City Royals. Breaking ball outside. With their outburst already here tonight, the A's have now scored at least six runs in 16 of their last 17 games. <laughs> and that was supposed to be their weak spot, right? They lose Giambi, they lose Damon. Right. Yeah, they were going to be a team with great pitching, but questionable offense, supposedly. They're a team with great pitching and a great offense right now. And right now is when you want to have great offense, going into September. Talked about the youth of the team. Somebody asked him before the game, "Do you think them being young helps them?" Because yeah, they don't get tired. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why they play so well in the second half every single year. See, this is this is another question, really, because with a game like this, you're up eight nothing, and you get to September, and a lot of times you don't get an opportunity to rest guys. Maybe rest at Tejada for a few right. innings or Chavez. Counter. And watching the A's work here in the first three innings, they're, they, they're going to continue to be aggressive. And they're going to put as many runs on the board as they can. And maybe Arda have a chance to rest a Chavez or a Tejada. Or, you know, maybe let Hudson work six innings and let his bullpen get some work. First and second, nobody out of run in already to make it eight to nothing as Ramon Hernandez comes up and drills one deep center field. Beltron back and he can't make the play. Two runners back to back at third base and two runners heading home but then Long goes back to third as the throw got into the plane in a hurry. Long was about three feet behind Ellis as they headed toward third base but he pulled up at third. So Hernandez has his second consecutive RBI double and it is nine to nothing. Ball is down he goes with it. Beltran gives it all he has. Comes up just a little short, but watch the runners. Terrence Long played this perfect. He's going to follow Ellis. Here's Washington waving Ellis, and he stops Long at third. And that's great base running, because even if the ball's caught by Beltran, Long's going to be able to get back to first base, so you walk right up to second base. And even if you want, you can step on it and step over on the third base side a second. Infield in again for the Royals. Have you, and again, it has a lot to do with winning, but have you ever seen a team laugh more and have more fun than the Oakland A's? No, I haven't. And I think a lot of that is just because they're young and they're, you know, this is how they think baseball is supposed to be, which yep. is really scary. I mean, Terrence Long's out there at third base, howling with Ron Washington, the coach who put the brakes on him and caused him to slide. I think that was just great base coaching by Ron Washington because he waved the first runner. Pointed it at Long to let him know, no, you stay here. And Long had to slide to stop. But here they are. They got two guys in scoring position again. Two 
and one to Ray Durham, who has tripled and scored and flied out. Both of those at bats coming in the first inning. You know, again, when they make the moves in the middle of the season, you kind of go, well, all right, yeah, maybe he can help. But Durham's done more than that. Mabry has done more than that. Upstairs again, three and one. The ace started off the year with three. Veteran left handed relievers, none of whom really panned out, so they picked out Ricardo Rincon, who figures to help. Royals seemingly have had the infield in all night. To no avail. This, yeah, this, the, the infielders aren't getting any work right now. <laughs> it's the outfielders getting tired. Swung on, backhanded, bobbled. No play. Durham aboard. Gets a bullet down. I think it kind of fools Rand a little bit. He had some top spin on it. Couldn't find it, but he does the right thing and holds it. So the bases are loaded with nobody out. Pitching coach John Cumberland to the mound to talk with Daryl May. It has been scored a base hit for Ray Durham. Still nobody out in the inning and already two runs in. Terrence Long still at third base. Ramon Hernandez, who already has two doubles in this game, and he's at second. There's Ray Durham at first. First baseman. And here comes John Mabry, who is up again. Mabry. Singled in a run in the first. Led off the second with a home run. Those are nice numbers. 315, 10, and 41. Really in part-time duty. 160 at bats. This is a chance to show Art how, hey, I can handle left handers too. Maybe playing first base tonight for Scott Hatterberg, who gets most of the time there. Here's that Bosley demanding that his hitters, hey, be aggressive. Be aggressive, but we want you hitting strikes. And that's pretty much what they've done tonight. They, they've gone the other way. They pulled the balls. They've been aggressive. Haven't chased anything. It's got the atmosphere of a, of a carnival here yeah, in this ballpark tonight. It does. <laughs> it does. And, and, and Mr. May's going to have to, he's going to have to eat some innings here because yeah. there's nobody up in the bullpen. And it was one of these games on, was it Sunday night? Monday night. Monday night, the Diamondbacks against the Dodgers when the Dodgers beat them 19 to 1. And the Daryl May for Arizona was left hander Eddie Oropesa, who had to stay out there and give up 10 runs in an inning and two thirds. And the Dodgers had a night just like the A's are having now. Everything they hit, they hit hard. In the dirt, two goals, two strikes. Pena's got another reliever up in the pen right now, right hander Blake Stein. The Royals have not called up their September players yet. They're going to wait till they get home on Friday before doing that. So they're still playing with, by September standards, a small roster. I hope they're the players for Kansas City. I hope they're in the playoffs. Maybe that's, you know, waiting until you get home. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got a little, a little circus feel, a little carnival feel, a little soccer game feel here tonight. Swung on the ground ball down to first. They're coming home for the force at the plate, and out at the plate is Terrence Long. Gutsy decision there by Sweeney coming to the plate. But it was in time. He could have ran to the bag and you know, kind of conceded the run. He's playing back. When he gets a two hopper, decides he's going to come home with it, makes an accurate throw to the plate, and gets the speedy Terrence Long. Well, I don't think there's any doubt who the fan favorite is right now, huh? And if you're a hitter, you got to love hitting in this situation. Base is loaded. One out. Right hand hitter facing a left handed pitcher. Everybody screaming your name, MVP. And let's face it, it's a chance to pad those numbers. 
Those numbers are good enough already as they are. This is where he's delivered here in this last run of his. Only Alex Rodriguez has more RBIs, five more. A Rod with 121, Tejada with 116. There's the chant again. saying what has taken Tejada to a new level, his ability to lay off the bad pitches, so he makes sure he gets some good pitches. This was the game-winning home run off Eddie Guardado on Sunday that extended the winning streak to 18. And then on Monday, the base hit up the middle off Jason Grimsley, another game winner, to extend the winning streak to 19. And the last hit was against a five-man infield. He hit it so hard. Yep. The guy in the middle didn't even have a chance to make a play. High fly ball pulled down the left field line. Ibanez over. He's got room to make the catch, and the throw comes in and goes way into foul territory to the backstop. But Hernandez, the base runner, who is a catcher, and maybe with a nine to nothing lead, the A's don't want to rub anything in here against the Royals, so they miss out on a chance to add another run. I think Hernandez was a little bit upset because I think he really wanted to go. And if you know if Randa could have cut that ball off, he might have been able to make a tag there. But you know, and what it does, it costs Tahada an AB. It costs him an RBI. And you know all his teammates want to get him RBIs Absolutely. to help him out in the MVP race. Absolutely, they want to see their guy win the MVP. So the batter is Chavez. Bases loaded at two outs now. Nine nothing Oakland. Chavez with an RBI single in the first. He struck out of the second. Now the big change for Tejada appeared to come about the time that he was moved to third in the lineup with Chavez hitting behind him. That's when Tejada really took off. A lot of things happened at the same time. The Jeremy Giambi trade, a series of players getting pulled up and sent down. There's a liner over the head of Ordaz into right field. A base hit and two runs will score to make it 11 to nothing. I know I sound like a broken record tonight, but pretty good pitch by May. Down in the zone. Chavez just a little out in front, just kind of flips it in the right field. And that happens sometimes when you when you when your hands you're taking the right path. Sometimes you can you can you can do that to a ball. It's not textbook, but you know he'll take the base hit, and take the two ribbons. Sure will. That gives him a hundred on the season. There's Jermaine Dye to look at a strike. So Tejada is second in the league in RBIs with 116. Chavez is seventh in the league with 100. Those are two pretty young players putting up those kind of numbers. If you're Oakland fans, you know your guys, these two guys are going to be around for a long time. You know your pitching staff's going to be around for a long time. They're all locked up. And, and I, think, I believe Tejada will be the next one in line. Exactly. He is a free agent at the end of next season. Foul ball racing out. Sweeney. Deep down the line, can't make a play. Well, the A's already have Chavez and Mulder and Hudson and Zito and Hong and Dai and Hernandez all signed for at least through at least 2004. But Tejada's the big one. He's a free agent after next year, and he has just sent his his value off the charts oh, this yeah. season. Let me see. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> for, for general manager Billy B. Because you know you don't have a whole, you, know, you can't break the bank. But you definitely like to, to lock him up and take care of him and know that he's going to be here for four or five years. Two and two, the count on die. Sometimes you need your teammates to, to sell that, help sell that for you. You know, all these other guys are locked up. I mean, to me, to me there's your MVP candidates. Numbers, I mean, A-Rod's 48 homers stand out. 
But the RBIs are almost identical. Almost identical. You can't knock the contributions that Tejada's made for the A's, Soriano for the Yankees, Giambi for the Yankees. Swing and a miss. Die is gone, and the inning is finally over, but it's another big one for the A's. Four more runs. Two of them driven in by Chavez, and it's 11 0 Oakland. Well, it seems like it's uh, pretty much a fait accompli at this point that the Oakland A's are going to set a new American League record with their 20th consecutive win. Who knows when or if they will ever lose again. They've got an 11 nothing lead on the Royals. I don't think we're going to need a rally monkey here tonight. Kansas City hopes we're wrong, but Hudson's been sharp. Working both halves. Their offense has been unbelievable. 12 hits in three innings. Mike Sweeney comes up and he looks at a strike. Sweeney missed about a month earlier this season with injuries, but still has enough plate appearances to qualify for the batting title. And I guess other than Ibanez breaking out this year, the best news for Kansas City fans this season, and it happened way back at the end of spring, is that they signed Sweeney to a long-term deal, which obviously is of great concern, just like you know Giambi here last year. But Sweeney's the guy that the Royals had to keep. He's been really productive for them the last three years. And finds himself in a in a dogfight really for the American League batting title. Bernie Williams himself and uh, Ichiro he came came in came into the game being a point behind. He's 0 for 1, so he's at 339. But you know he's in a situation. He's got to swing the bat. He's going to get an opportunity to. Two and one. The count on Sweeney. Interesting clause in his contract, though, Tony. It's a sign of the times. If the Royals finish below 500 in both of the next two seasons, he can get out of the deal. So it's in their best interest to get better, just to keep him. Granted foul, two and two. I think the, that's. I think for a lot of players, that's just protection for him in case. I think he likes Kansas City. I think he's happy uh, being there. And, you, know, you sign a long-term deal, you know, you're going to be there for a while. And, and just here recently, these different type of clauses have come up in contracts, and it just gives them an out just in case something should happen. Pop up for the second baseman, Ellis. Hudson making it look easy so far. One down as we send you back to Brian Kemp. Dan, let's go to the NL Central. Start of the day, Astros four back behind the Cardinals, and here Ron Gant. Crunches this ball with a 1 0 lead solo shot. The 17th of the year, 2 0 in the top of the six. It was 5 0 Reds. Now it's 10 5 cards. They're in the top of the ninth. By the way, Tony Bernie 0 for 3, hitting 340 now. All right, Mike Sweeney here 0 for 2, so Bernie's probably still got just a tiny lead over Mike Sweeney. Gets off the American League batting race. Here's Ibanez, who lined out his first time up. Well, you keep waiting for the Astros to make some kind of a move, and no, they, no. they just <laughs> they just can't get it. They had that real hot streak there, where they went from eight, from nine, ten games back to being right there in the thick of it, and you think, okay, they're there now. Now they're gonna you know, push it over the top, but they just haven't been able to get there. Again, still seven games remaining between St. Louis and Houston here in the regular season. 0-2 to Ibanez, down and away. And you touched on it earlier. Ibanez has just kind of come out of nowhere and had just a super year for Kansas City and really has established himself. Middle of May, he's hitting under 200. Now he's up over 280, and he's going to drive in 100 runs this year, which would be almost as many as he had in his entire big league career coming into this season. You know, for... Sometimes even for a guy like Ibanez, he's just getting consistent at bats. Can make all the difference in the world. Knowing you're going to be in the lineup every day. Takes it low, full count. Well, lost in the shuffle of some of the races or the seasons that a player like Ibanez in Kansas City. Mike Williams in Pittsburgh, who right. did go to the All-Star game, but what a season he's had. Tomo Oka in Montreal has won 13 games and pitched extraordinarily well. And there are some great stories even on some of the teams that are way out of it. Lined into center field. It'll drop in a base hit in front of Long. 
A one out single for Ibanez. Back to Brian Kenny. Hey Dan, let's go to the National League now. Colorado and San Francisco as the Giants in the wild card hunt. Benito Santiago out to right field. Jeff Kent on third. We got to play to the plate. Larry Walker the throw. Kent like he's flipping over a motorcycle. No, he's back in. He was all right, by the way. One nothing in the fourth. Well, realistically, the Giants really setting their sights on the Dodgers, although they've got a big series coming up with the Diamondbacks, and the Dodgers and Giants still have seven games left against one another. Joe ran to the batter. For the most part, it's the Western Divisions where most of the action is going to be in the month of September. It sure looks like it. I mean, this American League West race really has been amazing. I mean, Seattle was on top for a long time. Anaheim took the lead for a little bit. Now Oakland's gone in front. Round ball base hit into left field for Randa. Ibanez up to second on the play. Now speaking of the Giants you'll get a chance to see them at 10 30 Eastern 7 30 Pacific Friday night on ESPN as they host the defending world champion Arizona Diamondbacks scheduled starters Miguel Batista and Kurt Reeder. Some markets will see Houston at Los Angeles. The Giants took two out of three in a weekend series in Phoenix from the Diamondbacks and the only game the Diamondbacks won they had to come back in the late innings and win it. In the bottom of the ninth, Arizona struggling a little bit the last week and a half. Although they did pick up a big win over Los Angeles tonight behind Randy Johnson. Strike taken by Brent Maine. It's hard to imagine Arizona struggling the way Schilling and Johnson have pitched this year, but you know, they've hit a lull here and gave these other teams some life. LA, San Francisco have gone in both in one series from them. Goes down to get a ground ball to second. Ellis and Tejada drops it, and everybody is safe. I'm assuming the air is on Tejada there. That would be his 19th of the season. Looks like a Taylor made double play. Flip was okay, really. It's a long flip, but it's it's in good position. And Tejada just kind of closed his glove before the ball got yeah, there. Maybe thinking two before he got one. So that's his 19th error of the season. The bases are loaded with one out for the designated hitter D. Brown. And a swing and a line drive into right field. A base hit in front of Die. This is going to bring two runs home. Brown's going to stop at first, main around to third. Ibanez and Aranda score, and it's 11 to 2. D. Brown wasn't going to wait around this time. He got a pitch to hit, pulled it in the right field, knocked himself in two runs. No stride, just bring the knob of the bat through. First hit and RBIs with the big club this year for D. Brown. And the Royals are on the board now trailing 11 to 2. First and third one out. Nafi Perez coming up. I'm sure John Mabry was over there at first telling D. Brown that it's not that easy, son. You got <laughs> Not against this staff. Hudson looking for his 13th win of the season. Now smoked up the middle of the center field. A base hit for Perez. Maine will score. Brown stops at second, and it's 11 to 3. Just like that, Kansas City's put three runs on the board, and they put them on the board pretty aggressively, swinging at the first pitch, getting a pitch early in the camp. This is that fastball that's up and out over the plate. Gets it right back where it came from. Probably a good idea there by Hudson. Looked like he was going to try with the bare hand, but then he dropped his arm and tried to make a swipe catch with his glove hand. Just want to keep him healthy now and stay on top of the ALS. Three games up on the Angels. Luis Ordaz is the batter. From the stretch, Hudson works and the pitch is up and into Ordaz. Hudson's kind of an interesting story in how he got to where he is. Again, he's not a big guy. He's 
about six foot 170 pounds when he came out of high school he was undrafted wasn't big didn't throw that hard went to a junior college for a couple of years and then wound up at Auburn where he was not only an outstanding pitcher but a great hitter as well went 15 and 2 as a pitcher and hit almost 400 as a center fielder that's impressive in a tough conference to the mm -hmm. SEC SEC well, you got guys like Darren Dreifert who great as a pitcher and hitter John Olaru Todd Helton there's a strike two and one kind of get the feeling that he made or the A's made the right career choice on his behalf by telling him to pitch in the big leagues. You know, but see if you're a pitcher and, you, and you've had success hitting you always believe you can hit so <laughs> whether you you get the opportunity or not you know, he's going to he's going to believe he can hit and, he, and you know what he probably can because the thing about this A's staff is that they're athletic. Not only are they going to play for the athletics but they're very athletic and, and they feel their positions well they can swing the bat a little bit they can run a little bit. Hudson's well, he's run into some trouble here here in the fourth inning he's been pretty sharp tonight. He's got more wins the last three seasons than any pitcher in the American League 50. Next closest is Mulder his teammate with 46. The 3 1 to Ordaz swung on and popped into shallow center field. A play for Terrence Long two down. And that's one difference when you look at the, the staffs right now of the three division leaders. Minnesota, although they don't have an old staff, they've had Mays on the DL, Radke on the DL, Milton on the DL. The Yankees, in part because of age, you would think a little bit of Clemens here, a little Pettit there, a little El Duque, a little Wells. None of them have been completely healthy this year. But these guys are healthy, these Oakland starters. So are their pitching numbers. They're healthy too. <laughs> Just a little bit low to Tucker ball one and starting pitching as big a reason as any that the A's have won 19 consecutive games. Look at that starting staff ERA over the course of the street. Well, we mentioned the big three but don't forget Corey Lido in that too. He's been unbelievable. Tucker goes the other way again and he's got another hit and another run will score. And now Perez hits third and he's getting the wave home and he's going to come in to score. So Tucker doubles in a couple and the Kansas City Royals have scored five runs here in the fourth inning off Tim Hudson. And see if you're Tony Pena you got to love this. Even though your team falls behind 11 nothing. In the third inning, and they don't quit they keep pecking away and in a game especially this early in the game. You can peck away they put a nice five spot here in the fourth and that gets them within six. Michael Tucker second A.B. in a row didn't. Try to pull it, hits it the other way. And this ball got into the corner. Dave Justice tried to cut it off right there, couldn't get to it. Fell down. And him falling down. Him falling down allowed, I think this is Nephi Perez to score. Tucker thought about going to third, had to hit the brakes. He tried to cut that ball off and he couldn't. Falls down. Plastic bottom shoes slipping over there on the rim. All kinds of trouble for Justice. The the error by Miguel Tejada, remember this inning, has led in part to this five run uprising by the Royals. And even on Monday, when Tejada had the game winning single. The A's were down early five to nothing because an error by Tejada led to three unearned runs. Eleven to five Oakland leads Carlos Beltran is the batter. This is the air here he should definitely have had one and if he catches it Tony he might have had two. I think he turns two if he catches it and for whatever reason kind of closed his glove before the ball got there. And and you can bet he's standing there thinking about, hey, this is this inning is my fault. I've made I made the error that opened the door. Whoops. No balls, two strikes. The count on Beltron as Hernandez loses the mask. That's gotta hurt. I know there's a mask there, but for a 
for protection, but that jolt still has got to smart yep. a little bit. And Hernandez looks fine. Looks fine. <laughs> that's no big deal. Shrug it off. Hey, that's what they paid me for. Yep. And now the crowd getting back into it with an 0-2 count on Carlos Beltran. And he got him. Good pitch there by Hudson to end the inning. But Kansas City's on the board in a big way, scoring five off Hudson here in the fourth inning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a break and go racing. Well, it was a route. Now it just has the makings of a wild one here tonight. 11 to 5 Oakland leads in the bottom of the fourth inning, trying to extend their winning streak to 20, which would be a new American League record. And would give them sole possession of the third longest winning streak in the modern era of baseball, dating back to 1900. David Justice leads off the fourth. He struck out in the first, doubled and scored in the third. We mentioned Miguel Tejada, the only A without a hit tonight. It was also his error that led to three unearned runs in the top of the fourth innings. Justice with a fly ball, really a pop up in the shallow right center field, and back goes Ordaz for the first out as we send you back to Brian Kenny. Well, Dan, things looking good for the Cardinals first. We'll start things off with Houston and San Diego. This is Sean Burroughs. Remember him? Would be Phenom. Preseason rookie of the year, many thought, the National League. First RBI since being called up in September call up. It's 3 0 Padres, and it's a final. Cardinals take the Reds 10 5. Tino Martinez and Albert Pujols both 3 for 4. Six scoreless innings from the bullpen there, Dan. Well, Brian, I think Albert Pujols, another guy who's going to get MVP consideration over in the National League. Absolutely. Mark Ellis, the batter, although again, you look at Barry Bonds' numbers, and, and unlike Alex Rodriguez, Barry Bonds is at least playing on a contending team. Whether they make it, who knows, but Pujols will certainly get some votes. I think it's going to be interesting to see in both leagues. You know, Bonds is having the best year, I think, but not winning his team, at least at this point, not winning. I think that's going to be a factor. I think that's going to be the biggest factor. Mark Ellis pulls it foul, a ball and two strikes. It's going to be the biggest factor in the American League is the fact that uh, other than A-Rod, all the rest of the candidates are in the thick of things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tejada's not having one of those nights so far tonight. There's no denying what he's doing. Ellis pops it up at a right center. Beltran there along with Tucker. Beltran makes the catch for the second out. Now the 2002 NFL season kicks off tomorrow night on ESPN. Coverage starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern as Coors Live presents a special edition of NFL Countdown. And at 8.30 p.m., it's the 49ers against the Giants. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime football. Less than 24 hours away. Terrence Long, the batter, and he sends one foul left side. On the count on Terrence Long, who has doubled and walked. We'll all get another look at these Oakland A's Sunday night. Again, here on ESPN2, part of Sunday Night Baseball. They'll be up at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Art House A's taking on the Twins. One of the teams they swept during this 19 game winning streak. There it is. Now, the tie. We should talk about the tie at some point in that giant streak. The 26 game winning streak for the Giants back in 1960 remarkably was all at home. Tony. Did you know wow. That? At home. <laughs> they had a 30 game homestead. <laughs> you think you think the scheduling is goofy now. Yeah. It was all at home. And again they didn't even make the playoffs that year. You had to win your league outright. You had to be right at the top. But the tie was in the second game of a doubleheader after 14 innings it was rained out tied at one. So the stats held up at the game technically officially goes as a tie. I don't know that that detracts from the street. Ground ball back to the man and a nice play by May. Bad throw but they make the play over at first and the inning is over as the A's go one two three. The NFL season begins tomorrow 630 Eastern time with NFL countdown. You see our crew there Paul McGuire Joe Theismann. Susie Culver, they're talking to Terrell Owens. It'll be the Giants and the 49ers, 8.30 Eastern tomorrow evening. You know Dan and Tony have those sort of meetings all the time. 
course, a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah. That's the headwear we wear at our meetings here for Wednesday night baseball. <laughs> at least in Oakland. 11 to 5 the A's lead in front of a crowd. Get this. 55,528 the largest regular season crowd in Coliseum history. So they're noticing the A's out here. Now Wednesday nights they do have a promotion. There's some of the tickets thousands of them the ones up in the top level are available for just a dollar so that helps and that's one of the reason one of the reasons why more than 20,000 of the tickets sold today were walk, walk up. up. Yeah. How they, about that. We we're talking about that out there on the field today during batting practice. Sweeney grounds one foul. I mean there aren't too many empty seats just way up in the upper deck way way up in the upper deck. <laughs> they call that section up there Mount Davis. And it's, it's a tough seat. Tough to see the action from way up there, but the man's got his broomsticks up there. He's letting the world know, hey, we're going for the sweep. Jams him a little flare in the shallow left center field. Look out, boy, they got a case of the yips between the two of them out there. Justice and Long may have heard footsteps, and that ball drops in. The high little pop up. Justice thought Long was going to call it, and Long thought Justice was going to call it. It falls in. You see Justice okay. looking over at Long now, going to try to come back and make the play. Couldn't do it. And really, the center fielder is the guy who's got to take charge out there on this ball. But Terrence Long has done that for most of the year. So the leadoff man is aboard for the Royals. Remember, they got five runs in the fourth inning. Three of them unearned on the Tejada air. The sloppy D here allows Sweeney to reach leading off the fifth. And here is Ibanez, who singled and scored his last time up. And of course, Sweeney's going to take that base hit. He's trying to compete for a batting title. But uh, as electric as this place was in the first couple of innings, all of a sudden, I think people started to realize, hey, we might have a ball game now. Mm -hmm. Now they've overcome deficits. They've won in every imaginable way. They're not going to end the streak in a game in which they led 11 to nothing, are they? I mean, uh, that's just, that's if Kansas City has something to say about it, they would yeah. they would love for that to happen. I remember, we said off the top, USA lost to Argentina tonight, so maybe it's a night where long streaks and unthinkable things streaks come to an end, and the unthinkable actually happens. One and two, the count on Ibanez. Well, I think it's like we talked about earlier. I think Tony Pena's just really happy to see his club not quit. It, was, it could be, it would be easy being down 11 nothing to just say, hey, we're going to pack this one in. But they're not doing that. They're battling. They throw a five spot in the fourth inning and then come back and get a one, two, three inning, which they had in hand. Against one of the better starting pitchers in baseball. Banyas is up there battling, and, and you know, we talked about this his last at bat. You know, just getting the chance to be in the lineup every day and getting some at bats every day, having somebody believe that you know believe in you. He's really come a long way this year. As many players do, he did a number on his former team too, the Seattle Mariners, when the Royals played the Mariners this season. Really hit them well. You know, I've never been traded, but I've seen that happen <laughs> yeah. an awful lot. Ooh, he got it. Hudson strikes him out for the first out of the inning. Try to extend that winning streak to 20. Here is Oakland closer Billy Koch on what it would mean to set a new American League record. It'd be nice to have, you know, have a record under our belt. I mean, I don't think anybody really wants to tie a record. And I think we're going out there and, and in the hopes to win. I mean, I think uh, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's a, it's a thing that that would that we can strive for now. I mean, you know, you start winning, you win six, seven, eight in a row. You know, you're not, you're not thinking down the road this far. And um, just, I think we think about it, you know, before the game, um, on our way to the ballpark, and then, you know, as soon as we get here, it's like, as soon as we take the field, it's just like, hey, let's just go out there and play and have fun. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Everybody's having a lot of fun out there. And it shows. Koch has been involved in the last four games before the off day yesterday. He had two saves and two wins. And the last, the last couple, they had to pick him up. Yeah. Where he'd been shutting the door <laughs> for everybody else. 
you know, gave up the home run on Sunday. Uh, then Tejada hit the three run homer to win that one. Then he got in trouble the next day on Monday and coaxed a ground ball double play to get out of that inning. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a total team effort on this Oakland. On the Oakland side. Koch can be lights out sometimes. He can be a bit of a wild ride sometimes. Art Howe was asked before the game, did Billy Koch need the off day yesterday? And Howe said, not as much as I needed the day off from watching him <laughs> pitch yesterday. But then he went on to say, hey, the guy's been incredible. Yeah. He's, had, he's had a great year this year. And, and like I said, it's been a team effort on the, on the Oakland A's uh, part. Everybody contributing, everybody doing their share. Right on the corner, two and two to Randa. And of course, every game can't be a cakewalk game where everybody can breathe easy and relax. And I'm sure there was some one run games in there where you had to really battle and sweat it out, but you know, nobody can take it away from them. Here they are. They're 19. They've won 19 games in a row. You can say they've played sub 500 teams or they've done this or done that. They've done something nobody's done in 50 years. With a soft fly ball, shallow left field, and this ball's going to drop in. And Sweeney read it well off the bat as he slides into third. I mean, there were a couple of great plays right there that you, you, you just really have to see because Sweeney read that ball right off the bat and he was going first to third from as soon as the ball was hit. But the pick that Eric Chavez just made at third base on the throw by David Justice. Well, Justice comes in, gets this ball. On the second hop, Sweeney's read it right from the bat, and look at the pick <laughs> by Eric Chavez right there. What a great pick. That ball was right on top of him, and he just picked it like it was nothing. First and third for the Royals. This is going to get awfully interesting if they can scratch out a couple more here this inning. Brent Main is the batter, and he's one for two. Sign of any activity in the Oakland pen, and again, this is worse than it should be for Hudson, given the Tejada error last inning. What's happening here? The Royals are starting to get some confidence now. Didn't go. Well, and showing that pride that we talked about a little Absolutely. bit earlier. Well, nothing, nothing would do their soul. Any better than to come back from 11 nothing deficit and find a way to win this game. Did he go? Empire says no. Ground ball to the right side. Ellis to Tejada for one on the first the double play that ends the inning. That's the way to do it. No runs, two hits to the man left. Oakland by six going to the bottom of the fifth. ESPN 2 Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Jiffy Lou. A packed house here at Network Associates Coliseum better than 55,000. They were delirious early with an 11 to nothing lead. They're a little bit nervous right now as the Royals got five of the four. The nice 4 6 3 double play turned by the A's to end the top of the fifth. So the A's still with a six run lead as they try to run their winning streak to 20. Ramon Hernandez coming up. Against Daryl May here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Hernandez, two at bats, two doubles, two RBIs. Kind of an unheralded part of this Oakland team, but as much of an everyday catcher as there is in baseball, this guy's in the lineup a lot. He's really been productive tonight with two doubles going the other way. He's the guy in charge of keeping the pitching staff in order. Balls and a strike on Hernandez. Back to the top of the order for Durham and Mabry after him. May got the A's 1 2 3 in the bottom of the fourth inning. This is down an in ball three. I was going to say, he just, he, his last inning was sharp. He was 1 2 3. And now, after not scoring in the top half of the inning, the last thing you want to do is give them an opportunity. Up the middle. Backhanded by Ordaz, long throw. Did Sweeney get it clean? He did. And Hernandez is retired, one down. Nice play all the way around. Ordaz goes a long way up the middle to get it. Sweeney with a nice pick. 
That's a play where you see a lot of second basemen turn and jump and throw. He knew Hernandez doesn't run that well, and he just made a nice throw over there. Sweeney with a nice pick at first. And now Ray Durham comes up, takes a slow breaking ball in there for a strike. Durham two for three tonight. He has tripled and singled. Remember how he fits into the clubhouse. He's a little bit older, and whereas it's a bit of a frat house in there, Durham's more of an intense individual, I think, than most of the A's, at least on the surface. But he has given them something they needed, a leadoff hitter. He came over and he said, you know, I'm not so sure about DHing. I'm a second baseman. And he wasn't sure about hitting leadoff. There was even talk about trying him in the outfield, but he has DH'd and led off and done what Art Howe has asked him to do. And I guess when you're winning, you know, you'll do what the manager asks. Oh, and absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll deal with it. It won't bother you quite as oh, much. Oh, yeah. You know, you win 19 in a row. You know, if he asked you to go out and play defense for one half an inning, you're going to want to yeah. do it. You don't want to be the guy who's rocking the boat on a 19 game not. winning streak. That's right. Swing and a miss, and Durham is gone. Two down. Well, on the other hand, I think you got to give Art Howe a lot of credit, too, because Ray oh, Durham's an everyday guy. He wants him in there every day. And whether it's playing second or DHing or playing the outfield, you see Oakland, he's turning it up a notch in after the 23rd. I mean, 67 and 25. ERA drops a whole point. Runs almost a whole a whole run a game better. John Mabry the batter. May the 22nd, the day before that great run for the A's began, was the day they picked up John Mabry in the trade for Jeremy Giambi. And again, that's not the only thing they did. They moved Tejada to the three spot. They sent down Carlos Pena and Frank Menachino, which was a surprise within that clubhouse, and Jeff Tam. Mabry came over and started hitting for power right away. He's already got a home run here tonight. His 10th as a member of the A's as a part time player. And it looks like while the A's have retained that. That good natured clubhouse atmosphere that they've always had that on May the 22nd or 23rd when they really shook up the team. They get, they get open some eyes yeah. on this Oakland team that Art Howe and Billy Bean meant business. Absolutely. Ball to the right side. Sweeney to May covering, and that's the inning. Seven in a row set down by Daryl May, and we're through five. Still 11 to 5. Over. Back for the top of the sixth inning here in Oakland, where for the last inning and a half or so, things have calmed down a lot. It's still 11 to 5 Oakland as the A's look for their 20th consecutive win. Tim Hudson facing D. Brown. Brown had a big two run single back in the fourth inning overall one for two. By the way between innings on the video scoreboard out in left field they were showing highlights from some of the out of town games that have been played tonight including Jason Giambi's home run against the Boston Red Sox and when they showed that they booed here in Oakland. Fifty five thousand <laughs> people booing. Still upset that he left and went to the New York Yankees and wouldn't the fans here love to get another shot of the Yankees in the playoffs. Everybody remembers how close they were to knocking out the Yankees just last year. And even though the big slugger here is now there I think there's just overwhelming confidence in this town that the A's would go in there with at least a 50 50 chance of winning the series. A lot of people here in Oakland feel like they were a slide away from getting to the next round. Went for a great play by Derek Jeter. That that's exactly where they would have gotten to. And now a year later, you know, a lot of people feel like this is going to be the team to beat. And then is trying to shake off that pitch. And he got it in the hand. But that's an 81 pitches here. Went into the sixth inning. That's a. That's a good number, but he racked up a lot of pitches in the inning that they put the five runs on the board on the air by Tejada. Two balls, two strikes to Brown. 
followed by Nephi Perez and then Luis Ordaz, the bottom third of the Royal lineup. Nephi came up with a big RBI single last time up as well. Chased it in the dirt. No chance there. Strikeout number five for Hudson. That's why, that's why you like Hudson because he isn't afraid. He, he worked both halves of the plate. Looks like a splitty. Starts it in and and if you're a left handed hitter he'll start that fastball in at you and run it back over the inside part of the plate. D Brown hadn't faced him at all and so sometimes you have to learn on the fly and. Nice bunt there by Perez Chavez moving quickly got him. Again, there's that communication, letting him know he made a great play. Neffy with a perfect bunt. He put it right where he wanted to put it. Chavez mm -hmm. cut it off. Had a little trouble getting rid of it. Luis but he got him. Gold Glove Award winner last season, Eric Chavez. Boy, that is bang, bang at first base. Two outs in the inning. Nobody on. The batter will be Luis Ordaz. See what that chef has become a heck of a player. And he's only 23 years, 24 years old. Like a lot of these young guys, they've had experience. They've played at the big league level and gotten a chance to learn the ropes. And the other thing that Oakland did, because they they know they've got to keep churning players out of that system. Right. The free agents they lost last year, Damon Giambi, they. Stockpiled all kinds all of extra draft, draft picks, picks. Yeah, so here they well, here comes the next wave. And see, to me, that's that's the way to do it. I think, you know, in this environment of high payrolls and you know, nobody wants to be at that point, especially for the smaller market teams. You don't want, you can't survive on a 50, 60 million dollar payroll. And so, you know, you got to draft wisely. You got to spend a little extra money on your draft because those are the people who are going to take the places of those people who end up going somewhere else. Ground ball to short. Tejada to his left. Inning over. One, two, three go the Royals. Eric Chavez with a good D, and we'll see him up second when we come back. Brian Kenny here in the studio. Dodgers losing already today, so San Francisco a chance to get within a game and a half at first, but Larry Walker driving in a run, puts the Rockies up on top 2 1 in the sixth inning. Houston. They could pick up ground too, but Brett Tomko, seven innings of shutout baseball so far. It's 5 0 in the top of the eighth. Dan, Tony? Boy, the Astros uh, starting to run out of time with St. Louis winning earlier tonight. Here, Oakland try to extend that winning streak to 20. Got an 11 5 lead on the Royals, bottom of the sixth inning. And Miguel Tejada pops up the first pitch right out in front of the mound, and May's going to handle it himself. That is eight in a row set down by May, and Tejada is now. 0 for, 3, 0 for 3, officially having a frustrating night, having committed the error as well earlier. You don't see this in the league game very often. The pitcher making a catch on a pop up, but Tejada got jammed with that ball, and it wasn't enough time for either the first baseman or the third baseman to get in there and make the play. And so May made it himself. Eric Chavez, the batter. I mean, he is a big league ball player. Should be able to catch a pop-up. You should, but <laughs> if you go to spring training and they do the pop-up drill, the pitcher's job is to yell out who's going to make the play. He doesn't want any part of it. Good night for Chavez. We saw the good defense last half inning. He's also got a couple of hits and three RBIs tonight, giving him a hundred on the season. I really like his game. He's, he's the complete package. As soon as he gets a little bit more patient at the plate, I mean, he's going to really put big numbers up. Laying off that pitch right and there. And that's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. You know, you, he struck out earlier tonight on a ball that was uh, on a breaking ball that was a running away from him. And you see him shaking his head. He he knows what's going on. And you just need to be selective. Just as, as Thad, Thad Bosley talks about swing and strikes. Swung at another pitch that wasn't a strike, and Chavez is gone. That's five strikeouts for Daryl May, who's done a really nice job the last couple of innings. He really has. This is a fastball up and in, and after seeing a steady diet of breaking balls, kind of pulled off on that, and he just followed through with the swing. So. 
That's one of those you just kind of just shake it off and get them the next time. Nine in a row set down by May as Jermaine Dye comes up. Dye with a triple and an RBI in the first inning, one for three overall. It says a lot for how good this team is that is Blake Stein now warming up in the Royals pen. He's been up for a few minutes, so should be ready if needed. But Dye, not that he's an afterthought, but nobody's talking about Jermaine Dye at all. No. This guy's a really good player. You know, talks about Dye, you don't talk about justice that much. Terrence Long. You know, usually when you hear about the A's, you hear about the big three, Mulder, Zito, Hudson. You hear about Tejada here. A whole lot more here lately. And Chavez. Chavez. Well, how about Daryl May? Let's hear about him a little bit. Ten in a row set down by the left hander. On to the seventh. ESPN 2 Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Jiffy Lube. Now the route was on early in this one the A's with six in the first as you can see they led 11 to nothing after three big inning for Kansas City in the fourth and then nothing but zero since from Tim Hudson and Daryl May it's on to the seventh inning now in front of a crowd of better than fifty five thousand here in Oakland a six run lead for Tim Hudson and the A's a 19 game winning streak if they get number 20 that would put them one back of the Cubs of 35 for the second longest streak in modern baseball history. Right hander Chad Bradford now up in the Oakland pen. And a very effective member of that A's bullpen this year. After Tucker had doubled the left the last two times up. Hudson's changing his approach on him a little bit. He's trying to crowd him now, get him thinking about that ball inside. Caught two fastballs off the other way. Same kid. Already here in the first three pitches, he's thrown him a couple, a couple of splitties and got him out in front. Ball and two strikes to count on Tucker, Beltron, and then Sweeney coming up after him here in the seventh inning. Got it. Number six for Tim Hudson. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions right. of this game may not be disseminated without no express Bueller. written Marlowe. consent. Beltron. Take part in a Major League Baseball history. Vote for your most memorable moment at every Major League Park or on MLB.com. You decide because after all, these moments belong to you. Carlos Beltran takes it high. Now they've chosen the top 30 memorable moments but if these A's go on and break the all time record and win 27 in a row can they sneak in number 31. I don't think so. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what would happen. There's no write in portion of the ballot. I think the I think the votes might be tabulated yeah. <laughs> already. And there you can see what they've accomplished already. Fifty five years ago the last time anybody won at least this many consecutive games. Down ball down to first, bit of a tough hop there. The play is made by Mabry, two down. You know, there's still a good, if they win tonight, they're still six games away from tying the all time record. And that's going through Minnesota and then yeah. getting back within the comp or within their division and playing, playing teams in your own division. So that's, that's a lot to ask. I mean, I don't think anybody could imagine winning 20. Yeah. And with Anaheim winning again. I mean, Oakland's got to win just to stay three and a half ahead Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. <laughs> Angels have not let up. They've played great baseball, too. And eight games left between the A's and Angels. And if the A's are to keep moving on and break the all time win record, the pivotal 27th game would be against the Anaheim Angels. It's going to be some great baseball in yep. September down the stretch. 
Seattle lost. They were beaten by Minnesota three to two. So the Mariners lose a game to the Angels here tonight. Gotta be concerned in Seattle. They're now three and a half behind the Angels for the wild card lead. Boston lost to New York, so the Red Sox lose another game in the wild card race as well. There's six and a half back of the Angels. If you're, if you're a Red Sox man, it's getting tougher and tougher to, to feel like you're going to have a chance at the wild card and winning the division. If you're a fan of any of the teams in, in the American League West, I mean, they're going to bang heads here for the last three weeks of the season. And so. The best team is going to win this division. Some of them starting to stand here in Oakland, better than 55,000 here, the largest regular season crowd in Coliseum history. The 1 2 pitch to Sweeney. And a ground ball up the middle into center field, a base hit. Two for four. Mike Sweeney is tonight, so given what Brian told us earlier about Bertie Williams, I think we might have a new batting leader in the American League. That is correct. Yeah. This is a great A.B. by Sweeney. Looked like he might have hurt himself on that last swing. It's a ball out over the plate. You just hit it right back where it came from. And that's a great A.B. for him. And it just. <laughs> he's talking. He's having a conversation with somebody in the Royals dugout. Maybe trying to swing too hard. But anyway, he gets his second hit. Yep. Puts him in the lead. Bradford continues to throw in the pen. The batter is Ibanez, one for three. Out right in the outside corner, 0 and 1. Starting to cool down a lot the last little while here. Hudson right at 100 pitches. He's a workhorse, though. Even though he's not the biggest guy in the world, he averages about seven innings per start. Seems like this whole rotation averages seven innings per start if they're not finishing what they start. You know, I mean, this month, this past month, Lytle throwing one hitters, and you know, these guys throwing complete games. With the crowd really, you know, and this is their last home game too, so. The home crowd would like to love to see him get the 20. Fly to Minnesota tomorrow to begin a series on Friday night. And you can see the A's and the Twins Sunday night baseball here on ESPN 2. Barry Zito will be on the mound on Sunday night going for his 20th win of the season Eric Milton. Will be the starter for the Minnesota Twins and look at what the starting pitchers have done over the course of this streak. Great friendly competition between all the starting pitchers here in Oakland, just like there was and has been for years and years in Atlanta. You know, the Minnesota Twins came in here and got swept. They would like nothing more than have an opportunity to end this streak. Especially because they could meet in the playoffs, the way things are shaping up. And it's pulled foul. The other pitching matchups in that series Friday night Lytle, the American League Pitcher of the Month for August, against Brad Radke, and then on Saturday, Mark Mulder against Kyle Loesch. I almost get the impression for that series that you know, the matchups are like already set. There's a playoff preview for these two teams. You just, you know, they just played last week. You know, obviously, Oakland swept all three. Runner at first, two down, 11 to 5. The A's lead the Royals here at the top of the seventh. Hudson trying to finish off what could be his last inning of work. Line drive, left field, just as there he drops it. He had it and he dropped it. Around to third comes Sweeney. And at first is Ibanez. It's been scored, a base hit for Ibanez, and the Royals not done this inning yet. Another good A.B. right there, Ibanez. Gets a splitty down, goes down and gets it, goes right with it. Justice looks like he has his ball right in his glove, okay. and he does. And there, there it falls out. 
And so we've seen the air by Tejada the drop ball there by Justice the fly ball that fell in between Justice and Long earlier in the night. It has been a bit of a sloppy defensive effort by the A's here. And the Royals still in business here in the seventh inning. Joe Rand is going to be the batter. Hudson is going to stay. Or maybe not. Here comes Art Howe. And he wants, you know what that means, the side arming right hitter, Chad Bradford, to face Randa. Hudson has still done enough to win if the bullpen can bring it home. Six and two thirds here tonight. 11 to 5, the A's lead. Well, Tony Tim Hudson battled tonight. Didn't have the best defense behind him, but more often than not, pitched out of trouble. Doesn't get a chance to finish the seventh inning, but what a hand for him from the fans and teammates alike as he makes his way into the dugout. Yeah, the fans let him know that he appreciate his effort. And like you said, they made a couple of errors behind him, or made an error behind him uh, that, that made him get some little bit of extra work, but I mean, he battled. He gave him all he had. A play here and a play there, he'd still be in there. So Chad Bradford comes on to face Joe Randa with runners at first and third, two down in the seventh inning. Bradford's had a good year for Oakland. Tough on righties, 2.30 ERA on the season. Look at the walks. Yeah, I was going to say if you're Art Howe, you look at those numbers: 54 punchouts, 10 walks. You got to feel pretty good about that. He's done a nice job. Bradford leads American League relievers in fewest walks per nine innings. Something off, and on the appeal, he didn't go. A ball and a strike. With a lefty on deck, Bradford's probably in there just for this one right handed bat. And after seeing Tim Hudson all night, see a guy come from down under <laughs> and then throw a changeup from down under like that last pitch was. It's going to be awfully tough for Joe Randa to hang in there and get a good pitch to hit. Ground ball right at Tejada. Shovel it on to Ellis to end the inning. Seventh inning stretch here at Network Associates Coliseum. The A's still have a six run lead. Still 11 5 Oakland going to the bottom of the seventh inning in a packed house here in Oakland. Well, it's going to be a packed house. You know it. In the Meadowlands tomorrow night, the 2002 NFL season kicks off tomorrow on ESPN. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern time as Coors Light presents a special edition of NFL Countdown. Then at 8.30 p.m., Jeff Garcia and the 49ers taking on the New York Giants. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime football. New pitcher for the Royals, six foot seven inch, 240 pound Blake Stein. Comes on to face David Justice here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Stein, some years ago, was a member of the A's. Part of the Mark McGuire deal from St. Louis to Oakland and then traded from Oakland to Kansas City a couple of years back. Justice rips it on a bounce to first, but what a nice looking play by Sweeney. Sweeney made that play. He may definitely look easy and Justice hit that ball extremely hard. Look at him, he's in a position. Stays with it. Realizes that Stein got a late break and makes the play. There's a catcher coming up too. Didn't become a first baseman really until he was breaking into the big leagues. He really didn't become an all-star until he moved to first base. Yeah. And he's really coming to his own. There's Mark Ellis. Ellis has some Kansas City roots as well. Remember that three way trade between Oakland and Kansas City and Tampa Bay? That's the, the Johnny Damon, Ben Grieve, Roberto Hernandez deal. Ellis, a throw in in that trade, who wound up in Oakland. The other throw in, and, and not to demean him, but at the time, those were the three big names. The other guy who was a part of that deal was Corey Lytle. So the A's, you know, picking up a piece here, picking up a piece there, and turning them into valuable parts of their team. Those are the kind of plays you like where throw ins become, <laughs> <laughs> you know, become regular players in your lineup.
swing and a miss and that is all for Ellis two down back to Brian. Hey Dan here's what we call the old uh, TV jinx watch Brett Tomko here just as they flash up on the screen has never had a complete game shutout. There it goes Jeff Bagwell buries it no shutout but Tomko did finish it up get the 5 1 win on the Padres. Well, good news for the Padres Tony what did they use 36 pitchers yeah. this year. Yeah 36. A major league record Terrence Long is the batter and he takes it low ball one. You live there obviously still right. close to the organization. I mean have they have they found enough good ones to go forward in yeah. 2003. They, they have plenty It's just they, the injuries they had yeah. injured, lots of injuries. This year. And forced to go down to the minor leagues and bring up these young guys but I think in the long run they're going to be fine. Eh? They got plenty of arms in their organization. And the biggest thing is just finding another position player or two, and they're going to be fine. Long with the ground ball fair down the line. Tucker's going to have to go over to foul territory, and Long checking him out, but he'll stop at second base. Getting Terrence Long going would really help this Oakland A lineup. Beats this ball right down the first base line. Sweeney's playing off the bag. Can't get there. Second double of the night. First base runner for the A's since back in the third inning. They've got 13 hits on the night, Tony, and eight of them are for extra bases, including a couple of doubles by this guy, Ramon Hernandez. Doubled in a run in the first, doubled in a run in the third, grounded out in the fifth. Breaking ball for a strike from Stein. Stein's been able to get that slider over and really throw it anytime he wants to and throw it for a strike. And away there. Both of these teams with an off day yesterday, weird series, played Monday, played Wednesday, had Tuesday off, and they're both off tomorrow as they head to their next series. Kind of nice for Oakland. It gave this this crowd a chance to kind of develop yep. with the off day. And another indication of more attention for this team. You know, usually Art Howe might have five or six members of the media down there. So go back a few months. I mean, he was surrounded by about 25 writers and reporters before the game today. Which I was one of. I was just kind of hanging around the fence. I didn't want to. Yeah, ball right at Perez, the shortstop. And that's the inning. Seven complete in Oakland. The A's two innings away from a 20th consecutive win. ESPN 2's Wednesday Night Baseball, presented by Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube, the well oiled machine. And in part by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Top of the eighth inning. Royals down six with six outs left to go. That's all that stands between the Oakland A's and a new American League record 20 game winning streak. Art Howe going for defense now. Eric Burns has replaced David Justice out in left field. Brent Main leads off the eighth against Chad Bradford. Main one for three, bounced into a double play his last time up. Two and oh the count on Maine. Again, other teams in the American League West were following. The Anaheim Angels won earlier today, beat Tampa Bay four to two. The Seattle Mariners lost three to two to the Twins. So at the moment, the Angels are just three back. Of the A's, even though the A's have won 19 in a row. And on the verge of winning 20. It is some amazing yeah. baseball this year. The Mariners of the team really falling out of touch at the beginning of the 19 game winning streak. Seattle was in first, and the A's were three and a half back. So Oakland's picked up 10 games on Seattle during these 19 games. I don't think anybody expected Seattle to come out and win 116 games again. But they they played pretty good baseball too, and they've had some injury problems. But can't take anything away from these A's. They've just played outstanding ball. 
Brent Maine draws the walk. That's why as nice as the streak is the A's specifically David Justice know there are bigger things still at hand. The way we feel right now because there's a bigger picture here I mean, we're not that far ahead in our division. So the streak is a part of it but the fact is we still got to continue to play good baseball because the Angels are right there. Seattle is not going anywhere. So that's the bigger picture that's that's more important. Uh, the streak I think we all feel is go has to end one day. Um, and I think we approach it that way. I don't think we put any extra pressure on ourselves to uh, continue to win for the streak. I think it's more or less we're, we're just understanding that we got to continue to play good baseball because we don't have this thing won yet. And they do have the smallest lead of any division winner in baseball. But even if the Angels catch them, somebody else would have to catch them to knock them out of the playoffs. So they are in pretty good shape. If they win tonight, they'll be seven up on Seattle. That's a lot of ground to make up, although the Mariners and A's do have six games left against one another. And that's the saving grace, really, for a lot of these, for Angels in, in Seattle. If they want to catch them, they got to knock them off, and they can get a chance to knock them off head to head. As easy as it is to see a team getting on a winning streak, not this long, but a winning streak with his pitching staff, that's as hard as it is to imagine the A's having a long losing right. streak because somebody, Mulder, Zito, Hudson, somebody's going to throw a good game. Yeah, they, it's like the Oakland A's staff is a bunch of guys that, as, as a manager, you want to go to after a loss. You know, it's like Pedro, it's like Schilling and mm -hmm. Johnson. These three guys are like that guy. And when you put the ball in their hand, they're, they're really competitive and they want to win. And they've said already they don't want to be the guy who gives up whatever number of runs or whatever it takes for them to get beat. They don't want to be that guy. So the ball and two strikes on D Brown. One for three tonight. A two run single back in the fourth inning. Main at first. Nobody out. Now let's go back to the day the streak began. August the 12th. Seattle in first place and the athletics actually four and a half back so they've picked up 11 games on Seattle over the last three weeks. Wow. <laughs> wow. And the Angels right there they're 14 and six in their last 20 games so Oakland could be 20 and 0 so even at 14 and six the Angels would have lost six games but you can't ask for much better than that. He's a big reason why Chavez, Justice Hot, Mabry. Jermaine Die, Long. You know, tonight, Hernandez. Seems like everybody's gotten a big hit. One of the teams they've beaten during the winning streak, and as you can see, it's not exactly the uh, who's who of the American League. And the schedule is going to get tougher as they go back within their own division to play the Angels and Mariners a whole bunch the rest of the way. But you know what? Every team once or twice a season has a stretch like this. Nobody else has won 19 in a row. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, I mean, you try to, I, I guess the best way to describe, try to bring down the fact that, you know, Oakland's won 19 in a row because the teams that they played are, are under 500. Well, everybody's playing the same team yep. in the American League. And at some point or another during the course of the season, you're going to have your chance too. These are the only guys who've been able to put it together. And so, I, 20 wins is 19 wins is amazing. I mean, you get to 20, 20 wins in a row. That's 20 times going out there and playing the game and ending up with the W at the end. That is that's that's hard to imagine. Bradford ready. Some activity now in the open pen, which misses inside. And maybe a little more good news and more depth coming to the A's. Ted Lilly, remember him? As Ricardo Rincon starts throwing down in the pen, Lilly picked up in that three way deal between the A's and the Yankees and Tigers. Lilly threw a simulated game today, and if everything goes okay, if he feels good the next couple of days, he could be back in about a week. Three and two. That'll make an even stronger staff a bit strong. And another lefty too. Well, you get into playoff baseball, some of you know, your, your three or four and five starters become really important because now you can use a po possible guy like uh, Corey Lytle coming in to get some right-handers out, a guy like Lilly coming in to get some left-handers out. Those spots become huge for the postseason. I don't want to get ahead of myself 
too far, but you know, they're, they've got as good a chance as anybody in the American League of, of getting to the postseason and, and going on and possibly getting to the World mm -hmm. Series. In the most likely scenario, that's if they hold on to win the West, would it be them facing the Minnesota Twins in the first round? A team they just swept last week and a team they're going to play again this weekend. And if the playoffs were to start today, it would be the Yankees against the Angels and the A's against the Twins. The playoff is, the playoffs this year are going to be interesting no matter how it ends up. You know, Minnesota's been really good all year long. And they're just getting their starting pitching healthy. So you can't count them out yeah. either. Down and away, ball four. Back to back walks given up here to begin the eighth inning. More baseball coming your way Friday over on ESPN. National League style as Barry Bonds and the Giants try to make up some ground on the Dodgers and on the Diamondbacks. They'll take on Arizona 10 30 Eastern Time at Pac Bell Park just across the bay on ESPN. Some markets will see the Houston Astros against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Rick Peterson, the pitching coach, Coming to the mound to try and sort out Bradford as Rincon looks on, ready if needed, from the pen. Remember, we said right when he came in, maybe we shouldn't have said it. He's got the fewest walks per nine innings of any reliever in the American League. We walks just, the first two guys. We jinxed him, yeah. of course. <laughs> See, all those 10 walks, that's pretty impressive. In the last one, he was ahead 0-2. D. Brown battled him and got a walk out of it. You got the eight and nine hitters coming up. And so these next two hitters become huge here for Oakland because you don't want to turn the lineup around with some ducks on the pond with guys who, you know, Tucker's got two hits and two ribbies tonight. Sweeney's got a couple of hits. Ibanez has got a couple of hits. You don't want to get you know, the middle of the Royals lineup up there. Nafi Perez one for three an RBI single in the fourth inning first and second nobody out Chavez in on the grass at third and the pitch just a little bit low from Bradford and the crowd getting restless they've come to expect everything is going to go their way here they're spoiled rotten <laughs> is what it is and with Bradford in this delivery it's not that he's overpowering he's he's really in the mid 80s speed wise but being able to pick up the ball and take a good swing, and that's a whole another issue. There's a strike. Well, but the off day yesterday and another off day tomorrow, everybody's available down there in the bullpen. Should this game get any closer, and should Art Howe need somebody else, he's got to bring Cohen up and ready if needed. And you know, if he needs him, he'll go to Koch. Even though Billy Koch appeared in four consecutive games, ending on Monday, did have the off day yesterday. He's got there. Two and one. It missed up and in. You don't see many guys with this kind of delivery where he's a submariner, but it's not really that. He's not overpowering. He's 82, 83, 84 miles an hour. So speed wise, you know, he's not going to be intimidating just picking up the ball. He bailed out there two and two. It might be. One of the areas where they're a little bit unsettled, right handed setup guy. Is it Messier? Is it Tam? Is it Bradford? Who's it going to be? Well, when you're seeing a guy throw from down under, it's, 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 especially after facing Hudson all night long, it's going to be a little difficult. It's going to be tough. But to answer your question, that's why when you get to postseason, you know, having a guy like Corey Lytle, yeah, guy like Lily, those guys, four and five guys become important because now that gives you an extra weapon to try to get guys out, to get an out. Maybe an out that gets you out of a jam in an inning. So you can go to your closer or go to your setup guy. And I'll tell you what, having a guy like Corey Lytle to go into the setup world, that's a that's a nice yep. thing to have, a nice piece of the puzzle to have going into a postseason series. Two and two the count on Perez. 
And the pitch swung on, bounced to the right side, backhanded by Mabry. The race is on, and he's not going to win it as the Royals have now loaded him up with nobody out. Bradford got a late break. He thought Mabry was going to take that himself. And Nephi Perez takes really a bad A-B and turns it into a base hit. Just rolls over the top of it, and Bradford starts and then stops, and by then it's too late. Perez got a whiff of a base hit. And watch him turn it on when he sees nobody's there. Oh, I'll take it. So the Royals, who got all of their runs tonight back in the fourth inning, trying to put together another big inning here in the eighth. And to make Art Howe sweat a little bit more. See, Art Howe thought early on, okay, well, I'm going to be able to breathe tonight. Relax, kind of take it easy. And Another typical A's game. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they're down or they're up, they're never dull. They always get interesting at the end. Luis Ordaz is the batter. It was 11 to nothing Oakland after three. And it's been 11 to five ever since the fourth. Kansas City has had opportunities to peck away at that 11 5 deficit. Yep. And they just haven't been able to get a big hit. Inning ending double play in the fifth. Left a couple men on in the seventh. Swung on, bounce, backhand by Tejada coming home and safe at the plate. When he had a sure out at third base, he went for a much tougher play and it cost him. This one I, I cannot explain. Tejada goes a long way in the hole. I mean, really, Chavez goes right to the bag. Really, the play is to go to third. And instead, he goes home. And Hernandez, I know, wasn't expecting that ball. A mental mistake by Miguel Tejada. It's 11 to 6, and the A's are going to the pen. The lead now down to 5. Just a brain cramp there by Miguel Tejada going for the tough play at home instead of the easier play at third. Didn't get an out. A run scored. It's 11 to 6. Bases loaded, nobody out. And Ricardo Rincon comes on to face Michael Tucker. Michael Tucker tried to get time. Chuck Merriweather didn't give it to him. And it's the umpire's decision whether he gives it to you or not. He didn't. So he's down in the count 0 1. Tucker 0 for 4 lifetime against Rincon. Picked up at a deal with Cleveland earlier this season. Art Howe not quite comfortable anymore. Not only is Rincon into the game with these numbers combined between the Indians and the A's, but he's got a righty and a lefty throwing in the bullpen just in case. This game went from a relaxed stage to really almost critical now. But they need to get some outs here. And they're up five. They'll sacrifice an out for a, a run. And they'll do it a couple of times if they have to. One and two to count on Tucker. The left-hander is Micah Bowie throwing in the pen, and the right-hander is Jeff Tam. Down there, I thought they were going to get the night off tonight. Bases loaded, nobody out for the Royals here in the eighth inning. Check the swing on the slide of the way, two and two. That kind of gives you a lot of arm, a lot of arm action at the release point. First. Throws the fastball both ways work both both halves of the plate. Big slow breaking ball in a, in a, in a quick slide. Three and two. How about this inning if you go back through it? Bradford, who never walks anybody, walks the first two batters of the inning. Nephi Perez comes up with an infield hit when Bradford's slow getting over to first. And then Ordaz, credited with a fielder's choice in an RBI, when Tejada throws home instead of to third. I mean. 
don't think the Royals are hitting the ball hard. No, they're not. They're not even close. The A's are begging them to get back into this game. Three and two, the count on Tucker. Strike three call. I think this is one of those times where Tucker still kind of upset because he didn't get the timeout when he called it. But I think he was looking for a breaking ball here and got a fastball in and just couldn't pull the trigger. Chuck Merriweather is watching Michael Tucker pretty closely on his way back to the dugout. Oh, that's a slider. Michael not happy about it. Now Carlos Beltran turns around to bat right handed against Ricardo Rincon. Well, they're getting into the heart of the order now. By the way, just one more note on the Oakland bullpen. Jim Messier, who could be up or in at this point of the game, is serving a suspension right now, the second of a three game suspension, resulting from an incident with the Chicago White Sox when he hit Royce Clayton. So the A's are a man short of the bullpen tonight. Beltron already with two grand slams on the season, but he's 0 for 4 tonight. That's a pretty good bet that this is going to be his last hitter with Sweeney standing in the on deck circle. Unless he can get a double play ball. You got to believe they're going to bring a right hand in and get him. A tough lefty and Ibanez behind him, so Art Howe might have to go through a number of relievers. Just outside, two balls and a strike on Beltron. Rincon really wanted this pitch. It was up and just off. At third, D. Brown. At second, Amphi Perez. At first, Luis Ordaz. Just one out. The pop fly down the right field line. Die racing over. He'll make the catch. Tagging and coming home is Brown. He'll beat the throw at the plate. It's 11 to 7, and Perez comes down to third. Good hustle there by D. Brown. Main Dye made a nice play on this. Really a perfect one hop throw. Just D Brown speed beat the play. And that's going to be all for Rincon. Looks like the right hander Tam's going to come in. The lead is down to four. Well, a few innings ago, it was a laugher, and the A's were unquestionably on their way to an American League record 20th consecutive win. It was 11 0 Oakland after three. Kansas City with four in the fifth, but then things kind of settled down until this inning. The Royals have added two runs. They've got runners at first and third, two down as right hander Jeff Tam comes into the game to face the man who, right now, is the leading hitter in the American League, and Mike Sweeney. Sweeney, two for four tonight, two for eight, lifetime. Against Tam. Sweeney's done it the old fashioned way. He went 0 for 2 and he's got two straight hits. Jeff Tam was one of the guys sent down on that fateful day back in May when Billy Bean and Art Howe shook up the roster. Sent down three, called up three, made a trade. He was with the A's the last couple of years, called back up in July. Tam has gone 84 innings, 79 appearances. Since giving up a home run. The guy at the plate right now has 19 on the season. Just missed a ball and a strike. Yeah, for the outside corner there and almost got it. The fastball, he tried to sneak back on the inside on the outside part of the plate. A comeback win here tonight to end the streak would give the Royals something to talk about on the way home in what has otherwise been a long, tough season. And got to pitch up, fouled back, one and two. The 
Will Panay is trying to set the American League record and moving to sole possession of the third longest winning streak in modern baseball history. That's why 55,000 people have shown up here at the ballpark tonight. Two strikes. Again, he went for that outside corner. Just not getting enough movement at the end. Starts it off the plate and tries to run it back off the outside corner. This could be his only batter if he loses him. Raul Ibanez, a good left handed batter, would come up, and there's a lefty, Micah Bowie, ready in the pen for the A's. Now the 2 2. He has some good hacks. He went right at him there, and Sweeney took a good hat. Oakland A's bullpen's trying to get time because of the ball on the field, but look at Sweeney. He's right on that. That's a pitch he wishes he could have back. Two and two count. You're not supposed to get many things up and over the heart of the plate. And he took a rip at it and fouled it off. Time called again. Well, from Kansas City's dug our bullpen this yeah. time. Jason Grimsley, the right hander, Jeremy Affelt, the left hander. And then again, Bowie for the A's. Paul Bird lasted just one inning in this game, gave up six runs. 11 to nothing after three, but much tighter now. 11 to seven, two on for the Royals. He's not going to go easy. He's making him earn it. Tam has thrown some quality pitches here. Just missed the outside corner twice. A little sinker down and in. He'll get Ibanez if Tam can't get Sweeney. Now again, time is called. There's been some debris on the field every now and again. There might be a little bit of trouble down in that Royal bullpen, but hopefully it's all sorted out and the fans are behaving themselves. I think they're getting a little nervous. 11 nothing to 11 to 7. Again, the 2 2. Who feels that every pitch a good hitter sees gives him more and more of an advantage? I am. I'm, I, I really believe that. The more pitches you see, the better hitter you should be. And Tam's throwing him just about everything in his arsenal here, and he's fouled the last couple of them off. And so it really just boils down to can Tam make a pitch here with two strikes? This will be the eighth pitch of this at bat. Sweeney hitting 342. Full count. That will allow Ordaz, the runner at first, to be off with the pitch. So he's worked it to 3 2. Now, with the runner going, if he can get a base hit here, he'll cut it to, to a three run. Yes. Get it out the easy way, but Ordaz wasn't fooled. I'm sure the first base coach said, Look, we got to let Sweeney swing the bat. Make sure he goes to the plate. Ordaz at first, Perez down the line at third. Two runs in this inning to make it a four run game. 
the 3 2. High fly ball pulled down the left field line toward the corner at the wall. It is gone. Mike Sweeney hits a home run, a three run shot, and it's a one run game as Jeff Tam gives up his first home run in his last 84 innings. I don't think Sweeney was for sure when he hit that ball. He hit it pretty good, but. He watched it for a long time and Burns went as far up against the wall as he could go. And we got a one run game. That's a pitch up. And Sweeney hits this ball and he's looking. He doesn't know if he's got enough of that. I wasn't sure he got enough and I was pretty sure he hit it foul. But I, I thought I thought I yeah. thought it was going foul. But it's easily fair. And as soon as it gets out of the park, Sweeney has to has to shift it into high gear because he was standing at the standing in the plate area watching. So the Royals have scored five runs here in the eighth inning to make it a one run game. And that's going to be all for Tam. Left hander Micah Bowie is going to come into the game and the tying run is going to come to the plate when we come back to Oakland. What a game. Mike Sweeney is 20th home run of the season a three run shot off Jeff Tam makes it a one run game remember the A's led 11 to nothing after three innings and Mike Sweeney saying what you and I said you know it started foul and it just whoop, 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 came back fair kind of straightened out <laughs> and winds blowing if you look in the left field corner the winds blowing out to left and look at the right field flags yep. and they're blowing out to right so. What he's saying is making sense. We, when he hit it, he thought he was going to hook foul. It stayed straight. Michael Bowie, a left-hander into the game, and he jumps out in front of Raul Ibanez, 0-2. So Art Howe, after Tim Hudson, has had to go through Chad Bradford, Ricardo Rincon, Jeff Tam, now Michael Bowie, a left-hander called up at the end of July. And he's already got his closer, Billy Koch, up here in the eighth inning. Remember on Monday, the A's trailed five to nothing, came back to win seven to six. Now they were up eleven to nothing, and the lead is down to one. They may be winning, but they're not winning dull, that's for sure. Outside. Once again, you got to give Tony Pena's his crew a lot of credit. They didn't quit. They kept battling. And now they find themselves down a run after being down eleven to nothing. And two. We talked about it earlier. The Tejada error in the fourth inning led to three unearned runs. And Tejada not charged with an error this inning, but just made the wrong play. Made a throw for home instead of an easy play at third. So they didn't get an out. And that could have changed the inning. Absolutely. Fights it off down the left field line. Burns racing over, but this ball is foul. Jeff Tam right now after facing just one batter and giving up the home run to Mike Sweeney. Two and two the count on Ibanez. And the ground ball to the second baseman Ellis. Inning over. But the Royals get five more onto the bottom of the eighth. 11 10 A's. Brian Kenny here in the studio. Pretty good finish to the Rockies and Giants. A 2-1 ball game. Two on, two out in the ninth. Bill Miller, long shot, but Larry Walker is there. So the Rockies take it. San Francisco staying two and a half behind the Dodgers in the wild card. Dan, Tony? Brian, thanks very much. A wild one here tonight with the Royals packed within a run as the A's try to extend this winning streak to 20. It was easy, at least it looked easy in the first three innings. Anything but since, as the A's have already gone through five pitchers. And the last time that a home team, this is from our friends at Elias, the last time a home team blew a lead this big, 26 years ago, 
Mike Schmidt hit three home runs in that game against the Cubs and the Phillies rallied to win 18 to 16. Four home runs. I beg your pardon. Jeremy Affeld into the game now for the Royals here in the bottom of the eighth. One of the things that's happened here, look at Affeld's numbers. So Oakland, they've kind of gotten flat off this. With 11 runs on the board in the first three innings. In Kansas City's bullpen, you got to give them credit. They've done a nice job here for the next four, shutting them down. Got to feel a little bit for Tim Hudson, who was betrayed by his defense. He wasn't at his sharpest tonight, but six times this year, Hudson has left with a lead, and the bullpen has let the lead slip away. Never know, number seven could be here tonight. Now back two and two. And again, not to pin it all on one guy, but that's the guy tonight. He has made one error, which cost them three runs, and then just a bad decision, which turned around an inning, not charged with an error. It cost him a few more runs in the eighth inning. And now it's a nail bite. And so we will see Billy Koch in the top of the ninth inning. Not exactly the situation Art Howe was looking for. Long run for Sweeney. Good effort, no play. Let's take you back in case you missed some of the earlier moments in this game. Miguel Tejada. First with the air in the fourth inning. Led to three unearned runs and then this one with a big lead instead of the easy out at third. The tough misplay at the plate. You could see the way Hernandez was standing right. at the plate. He wasn't even expecting a throw. Not not a chance was he expecting a throw. And if he had just gone to third they'd have gotten an out. Saved possibly a bigger inning. So he scored a fielder's choice. But it really was a bad decision. He'd have gone to third and gotten the out. He even tried to turn and maybe go to second to get the out. I think just getting it out in that play is a good play. Hop fly, shallow right center. And a Beltron runs out from under his cap to make the play one down. Well, remember, we saw them earlier. Thousands and thousands of people brought with them tonight. Miggy for MVP. Little right. placards, little signs. and. We haven't seen quite as much of them over the last few innings. I mean, one game shouldn't take away from what he's accomplished the entire season. Oh, it's not. It's not, because nobody feels worse about it than he does. Yeah. You know, he's 0 for 4, or he's 0 for 3. He was hit by the pitch the first time up. He's the only guy without a hit tonight. He's made a couple of bad decisions that's cost his team. Out of the 10 runs, a good five or six of those runs. Are a direct result of decisions that he made. So, but he could very easily come up. Hit one out of the I, I wasn't going to say it. I was just, <laughs> you know, and that's he's had that kind of year. Yep. And, and tonight, he's really been uncharacteristically swinging early in the camp. And this is one of those games you, you hope you can get out of with a win. And for him individually, you turn the page, forget about this game, and look forward to the next one. Three and one, the count's John Mabry, who's had a good night. Two for four with a homer and a couple of RBIs. Eleven ten Oakland, bottom of the eighth inning. And a full count now to Mabry. Jason Grimsley, veteran right-hander, ready in the pen, perhaps for Tejada. And the ground ball to second, gobbled up by Ordaz. Mabry gone, two down. And there again is what Oakland is trying to accomplish here tonight. Sole possession of the all-time American League record for longest win streak. They're looking for number 20. If they can hang on and win this game here tonight. Tony Pena's made the move. The right-hander Jason Grimsley is coming in to face Miguel Tejada when we come back to Oakland. From a lapper to a nail-biter for the A's here tonight. An 11-0 lead is almost gone. It's 11-10, but Oakland may be looking for a little insurance here at the bottom of the eighth. Jason Grimsley, quality right-handed reliever, comes on for the Royals. Good stuff, but even his good stuff could not derail Miguel Tejada 
two days ago. Remember that game winning RBI single on Monday that ran the winning streak to 19. That was off Grimsley. So they meet again 48 hours later. The only difference is instead of the adrenaline flowing freely, you know, tonight's been one of those nights for them. And this is a big situation for them, so he needs to have a good at bat. They still believe, notwithstanding the rough night that Tejada has had tonight. One other thing about Tejada that should not be overlooked, he plays every single game. This is his 409th consecutive game. That's the longest active streak in the majors. That's how you learn. And then, you know, they put him out there and said, okay, sure, stop job yours. Let's see what you can do. And he's put numbers up. Three straight years. Grimsley doesn't get the call there, and it's 2-0. and oh. Him to pull. They need that outfielder to come in and have five guys in there like they, <laughs> like they did on Monday. They Bring still him. couldn't stop him. <laughs> nice play. I'm going to get my pants dirty tonight, too. <laughs> and there's the closer. We're going to see him in the ninth inning, Billy Koch. The thing about Tejada, you see him. He's not a very big guy, but he's got some kind of pop the other way, too. He's not just a pull hitter. He'll take that ball out over the plate and drive it in the right center field, too. On the corner, two and two. The A's have had just one hit in the last four and two thirds. They erupted early and have been silent ever since. A high chopper down to third. And the throw wide of the bag and now Tejada finding out that he had a chance at second but by the time he found the ball or heard his coach he couldn't go to second. It has been scored a base hit for Tejada. Tejada saying what happened with the ball. It's a high sinker. He rolls right over the top of it. Randa knows he's got to hurry. Runner, Throws this ball baseman. into Every the runner. Man. There he is. He's going hard down the line. <laughs> looking, he's looking for the ball and realizes the catcher. Backing up the play like good catchers are supposed to do, running right down that line, too. He had a long way to go, too, to get to it. You don't want to risk anything with Eric Chavez coming up. Chavez didn't like that call. He's two for four with three RBIs tonight, giving him an even 100 on the season. Kacha sure had a long time to get loose down there in the bullpen in preparation for the top of the ninth. 37 saves on the season for Koch. Ooh. That's what I thought. Ooh. <laughs> Grimsley went right at him. Yeah. But don't give it to him again. Man, I would. <laughs> Chev is right on this ball. He just was underneath. And that's one of those pitches you'd, you'd love to have back. Way out in front, 0 and 2. Tejada at first, two down. Grimsley's gone with the really trying to get the turbo sinker on the outside corner. Came at him with a fastball in the middle of the plate. Looks like Grimsley's ball for Chavez's point of view will work away from. So if he throws this ball in, that goes out. And he got him to end the inning. So we are headed to the ninth. Billy Koch and the A's, three outs away from their 20th straight win. 
Well, at 11 nothing, I think everybody in the ballpark chalked up win number 20 and said, who's next? But the Royals weren't quite ready to go quietly. Five in the fourth, five in the eighth to make it a one run game. And when the A's lead after eight, which they often do, at least this season, they have won every single time. Now, there have been some blown saves. Billy Koch has blown five saves this year. But I guess when you lead a charm live, it seems every time Koch has some trouble, the A's come back in the bottom of the ninth and win the game. Still, like, like this weekend. Yeah. And uh, you know, gave him a home run and, and just really worked himself into some trouble by working working behind in a camp like this. You know, he needs to get ahead. And you got to remember, he's worked a couple of games, few games here in a row. Had the off day yesterday, but worked four consecutive days before that. When he struggles, this is how it starts. Falls behind, forced to come in with a fastball. Joe Randa leading off the ninth. Koch has 37 saves in 42 opportunities this season, second in the league in saves. Eddie Guardado with the Twins, one ahead of him. Art Howe believes, and Billy Koch has tried to make him believe, that the more Koch pitches, the better he is. And this is already the 71st appearance for Koch. Three and one. He has already pitched 79 innings. Twice this year he has gone three innings. He for a closer, he's a workhorse. He didn't like that last call. He no. felt like he looked the outside corner. Three one to Randa. Swung on and fouled back. Full count. It's never dull and tonight it hasn't been easy at least lately for the A's. History is what the A's are trying to set tonight an American League record 20th consecutive win three outs away. Line drive center field base hit. Don't go away. That bat by Randa, he just stood in there, took the heater, fought it off in the center field, base hit. Now the pinch runner coming on for the Royals now. A big hand all around. For Joe Randa, Kit Pello comes on as a pinch runner. He's the tying run. Nobody out of the ninth inning. And Brent Maine is the batter. Chavez, the third baseman, in on the grass. Mabry holds on Pella at first. And a throw to first to see if Maine is giving anything away, whether or not he's bunting. The, the rule of thumb generally, Tony, is on the road. You play for the lead, play for the win, not for the tie. So does that mean he will not be bunting here? That, I, you know, I think they've, they've battled so hard tonight to get within a run. I think they're, they're going to square and bunt. And he gets it down. Mabry on to Ellis. Sacrifice for Maine. Pella to second. Good execution there by Brent Maine. Taking a 96, 97 mile per hour heater and getting it down. Pitch up in the zone, deadens it enough so that you can get the runner to second. And so now you've got D Brown and, and Nephi Perez to try to get a base hit here to tie this ball game. Hello, the runner at second, one out. Brown, his first action with a big club this season, one for three, had a two run single. He's also walked. Koch and about 45,000 were still here. I didn't like that call. He plays some pretty good pitches down in the zone. Chuck Merrill just hadn't, hadn't given it to him. Deep Brown's going to have a hard time turning up on this heat. Well, we told you it was 26 years ago, the last time a home team blew an 11 run lead, the last time the Athletics blew an 11 run lead. They were in Philadelphia 66 years ago. Check 
the swing. No. Chuck Merriweather punched him out at the plate. Brown is gone. Two down. And this is what I'm talking about when you go from a dead stop. Once you start your momentum, it's hard to stop. And Chuck Merriweather calls him out. Yeah, yeah. And he did go. Yeah, he did. So the Royals are down to their final out. That means the A's are one out away from a 20 game winning streak. NFL yearbook 2001 Vikings coming up next year on ESPN2. And we have a pinch hitter now for Kansas City as Luis Alisea comes up for Nephi Perez. A base hit could tie it. Koch trying to end it and send this place. Into absolute delirium. The largest regular season crowd in the history of the Coliseum. 55,528. Hoping to see a little bit of history tonight. They, they didn't expect quite as much of a roller coaster ride. Seeing all but one run from an 11 to nothing lead disappear. Alisea a one for 15 as a pinch hitter this year. Check swing tapper foul. Cox has come in and thrown nothing but strikes, really. Good power fastball. Over to the count on Alisea, the tying run at second base. Swung on, fouled off, 0 and 2. Good slider right there, down and in. Billy Koch said if we've tied it we might as well break it. He's a pitch away. The only reliever in history with 30 or more saves in each of his four first four seasons as a big leaguer. He was a closer about two weeks after he got to the big leagues back in 99. There's more than just a streak at stake here. The Angels won again. So Oakland needs to win to stay three and a half ahead of Anaheim. Second base. Sliced into left field. It's dropping a base hit. And the Royals have tied it here in the ninth inning. They have come all the way back from an 11 to nothing deficit to tie it in the ninth. Great A.B. by Alisay. He just stayed up there and fought off a fastball to left field. And outfielders, outfielders are playing deep. Fastball just kind of gets jammed and fights it off the left field. Good base running by Pello. He comes around. Burns tries to make the throw. Too late. Luis Ordaz swinging a miss. Lone save number six for Billy Koch. Now the optimists among the A's fans would say that's just going to make the win that much more dramatic. <laughs> whenever and however they figure out how to win it tonight because they've been figuring out how to win games in wild ways in this streak. But this one's definitely the wildest. It was 11 nothing after three and the Royals have tied it up. Miguel Tejada, by the way, the hero of the last two games, just hit 
in the bottom of the eighth inning. So he is not scheduled to come up in the bottom of the ninth. So if he's going to be the hero again, that means this game's going extra innings. I'll tell you what, that base hit just took a whole lot of electricity out of this ballpark. I was going to say, it sucked the air right <laughs> out of this place. <laughs> just <laughs> absolutely got quiet here. And the guy you feel for is Tim Hudson. 11 run lead. And looked for sure like he was going to get the win. Now he gets the no decision. Seventh time this year the bullpen has blown a lead for Tim Hudson. No balls, two strikes to count on our dives. I've been saying this all night too. You can't, you have to give credit to the Kansas City Royals. They could have folded their tent a long time ago and they didn't. They kept on battling. And nobody's happier than Tony Perez. He's gotten these guys. This, this, a game like this, whether they win or lose, does a lot for their confidence. I mean, they show people that uh, you know, there's no quit. We're going to battle you. We're going to make you earn whatever you get. It's as if Art Howe had a premonition. He talked extensively before the game about the pride the Royals have and how they're just not going to roll over for the sake of the streak. Look out. Sails to the backstop and then bobbled by Hernandez. So into second base on the wild pitch goes Alisea. And now a blue pier there could give the Royals the lead. In this pitch, he just looked like he overthrew this. And then he bounces back to Hernandez, and he would have had a shot at Alice. He just lost the, the grip on it. Well, you've seen a little bit of everything in this game. <laughs> just a, Koch was in control, it looked like, and one strike away from setting a record, and next thing you know, playing base hit, tie ball game. Now you're one pitch away from being down. The 2-2 to Ordaz outside, full count. You don't want to lose this guy, the, the number nine hitter, a right-handed batter, and bring up a more dangerous hitter in Michael Tucker, who's on deck. Man, I don't know about your score sheet, but mine's taking a beating over here today. <laughs> You know, the last game I did was the 19 oh, to 1 right. game on Monday. This is a piece of cake compared to that. <laughs> but this one may not be over yet. Who knows? Tied at 11 in the ninth. 3 2 pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Ordaz got a pitch out over the plate. In a situation like this, you just want to try to put your bat on the ball. Don't try to, don't try to go up there and, and muscle up on a guy who's going 96, 97 miles per hour. I would say it's AB it was a nice AB, and that he just put the bat on the ball and it fell in. Runner goes, and they got him picked off. Boy, what is going on? Alisea ties it with a base hit and then denies them a chance to take the lead. Unbelievable game, especially with what's at stake. A 20 game winning streak as the A's blow an 11 to nothing lead. Kansas City ties it in the ninth. Luis Alisea pinch hit bloop single to tie it. He gets to second. What's he doing going to third with two outs? I, I don't know. He's already in scoring position. And, and I guess after a couple of pitches he thought he had Koch. Lulled to sleep and he gets picked. And of course, Koch is not happy about you know, giving up the hit to, to, to tie the game. And so now Alisea stays in the game at second base. And Dodge moves over to over to short. And Pello goes to third. And Jermaine Dye leads off the bottom of the ninth against Jason Grimsley. Dye, the number five hitter, Eric Burns on deck. Remember, he came on defensively for David Justice, but now Scott Hatterberg is out of the on deck circle in Burns' spot. 1 0 the count on Dye. Tied at 11 here in the bottom of the ninth inning in front of a stunned crowd in Oakland. Stunned is a good word, I think. 
Some people are standing, some people are sitting. All this action on a school next week. <laughs> yeah. We want to see this record. The swing of the bat would send the A's into history with their 20th consecutive win. Something no American League team has ever done. Boy, but to blow an 11 run lead, something the A's have done here tonight. Only the Giants of 1916, and they had a tie in there. And the Cubs of 35 have had longer winning streaks in the modern era, that's since 1900, than the A's of 2002. Swing and a foul back, two and two. One way or the other, this game's going to have an effect on this Oakland team. They're able to come back and win this game. Yeah, they're going to feel good about getting the 20. But they're also going to know that, hey, we had an 11-0 lead against a team that's in last place when they came back and tied us because of mistakes that we made. And if we were the type of team that wants to get to the postseason, we're going to have to play better baseball yep. than we played tonight. They handed run after run to the Royals. Fouled off by Dye. If it goes to the 10th, we will assume that Billy Koch is coming back out. Nobody up in the pen. Koch threw 22 pitches in that top of the ninth inning. Tough to fault him for the blue pit by Alisea. I guess if you're going to hang something on Koch, it's falling behind Aranda 2 0. The first hitter he faced and eventually giving up the base hit. Alisea tied it with a little flare to left field. Check swing and a full count on Dye. And that's going to happen when you're in for closers. You know, sometimes when you bring them in in these one run games, you know, sometimes they're going to make a mistake. Sometimes you're going to make a bad pitch. Sometimes they're going to make a great pitch, and a hitter's going to do a great job of hitting. You can't expect them to go out there every time and not give up anything. Yeah. Well, the story of this game is the Oakland defense, really. Absolutely. Without question tonight, the defense and the decision making on the defensive side too because you know, the, the biggest play of the night now has turned out to be Tejada's decision to come to the plate instead of going to third. And that decision has cost them at least two runs, possibly probably three. Full count pitch again to Jermaine Dye. Swung on, fly ball, right field, fairly deep, but playable for Tucker, one down. You can just sense being here in the park that everybody here in the stands feels it's going to end here in the bottom of the ninth. They're just wondering how the A's are going to pull it out. They've come to expect to win every night. Well, maybe the hero is going to be a guy coming off the bench. Scott Hatterberg pops out. Number 10. And is a pinch hitter for Eric Burns. Look at that. The police are walking in the A's dugout, so they at least feel like something's going to happen this inning. Hatterberg plays generally the first baseman for the A's with John Mabry getting the start tonight. So Hatterberg comes off the bench against Grimsley. A 19 game winning streak on the line here for the A's. The front runners in the American League West right now three up on the Angels. Swung on, fly ball, deep right field. They've done it again. Get away. 
And in the bottom of the ninth, Scott Hatterberg comes up and hits a bomb to right field for the game winning home run. The Oakland A's have set a new American League record with their 20th consecutive win. And this is a game nobody here will ever forget. Hanging out over the middle of the plate. And get it out of the ballpark and the Oakland A's, like they've done so many times during this streak, have found a way to win it. <laughs> they have done this so many times under so many different sets of circumstances in the last three weeks, but this was without question the wildest win of all 20. <laughs> they are not from this planet right they are now. Not. <laughs> they begged the Kansas City Royals to win this game. The Royals came back from 11 down to tie it. Scott Hatterberg, the pinch hit home run to win it in the bottom of the ninth, 12 11 Oakland. Scott Hatterberg joins us from field level. Congratulations, Scott. I don't know if you can hear us down there. Are you guys ever going to lose a game? Oh, jeez, I sure hope not. <laughs> I'm going to have gray hair if we keep it up like this, though. So. It's well, a tough, it's a, it's a good win for you guys, but 11 nothing leaves. Is it going to stick with you a little bit? Yeah. I mean, we uh, we jumped out early, and I think maybe let off a little bit. Uh, didn't play real good baseball in those middle innings. And they came back, and they came, and they came back and made it a game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can learn from it and just keep the pressure on, but... Uh, it's some kind of magic right now. Scott, you're making, uh, you guys are all turning Art Howe into an old man day by day, but look around you here. There's at least 40,000 still here from the 55,000 who were here before. There's a love affair going on in this town right now. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's so exciting to see. I mean, this is the fun time here to play. Uh, you know, we're playing well. Have them come out and support us. It's just nothing better. Well, talk about, I, I mean, now tomorrow or the next day you start thinking about 21. I mean is setting the record is winning 27 in a row important or are you just thinking about the Angels behind you. Well you know I think we're overshadowing how good they're playing right now. Uh, you know we're playing so good yet they're just we just can't we just can't pull away from them. So they're playing great baseball and we know that they're right there on the horizon and we're gonna have to go in and beat them. So well you know we got to we got to keep this snowball rolling. Last question where does this rank among the big moments in your major league career. Uh, this is. <laughs> It's got to be right at the top, boy, definitely. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks for the time. Hey, thanks. My pleasure. Scott Hatterberg comes off the bench and smacks a game-winning home run. They are simply amazing. 20 consecutive wins for the Oakland A's, who led 11 to nothing, saw the Royals come all the way back to tie it up, only to see Oakland win it in dramatic fashion at the bottom of the ninth. A no-doubter to deep right field. A new hero every night for the incomparable Oakland A's who have won 20 consecutive games the longest winning streak in the history of the American League. They are off to Minneapolis to take on the Twins on Friday night. If they can beat the Twins Friday night they'll match the Cubs for the well second done. longest winning streak ever. The Cubs in 1935 like in won 21 in a row. The all time record is 26. The A's are at 20 right now. So the final, the final Oakland 12 Kansas City 11 a thriller here at Network Associates Coliseum tonight. NFL yearbook is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for more log on to ESPN.com.